And welcome everybody to this week's episode of Omega Dawn, our Star Frontiers Alpha Hawks uh, saga. Um, welcome to the Fantasy Grounds College, who's dropped into the um, uh, stream chat. Hi, welcome. Hope you enjoy it. Um, when we left our intrepid crew last time, uh, they had just returned from the floating mining platform, the Jetson, in the atmosphere of the planet Venturi, and have arrived back at uh, the uh, ship, the Money, Money Spider, which is, as you will all recall, orbiting uh, via a 20 kilometer long cable connected to the moon, the Snowball, and therefore spinning around the moon at a fairly rapid rate, generating 1G of, uh, of gravity in the ship. Um, they've just met with, the, you've just met with the captain, uh, had dinner with him and given him uh, a, his debrief you uh on uh, on things uh you then all retired for the evening uh and uh we pick things up the next morning um you meet uh with the rest of the crew in on the mess deck um uh the captain is not uh on uh, is not with you um but everybody else every other member of the crew is uh, is um, um, is present. Um, that's uh, you you. Uh, they take themselves, and you take the opportunity to introduce yourselves to each other. Um, um, this is a point where, if you want to take notes, I'd get a note open and ready. Because <laughs> I'm about to give you a list of names and positions. Um, there is a. Uh, Baralu App Rivachan, who is a. Uh, would you like me to spell that for you? Or we'll throw it in chat. Or we'll throw it in chat. Which is basically what I was going to do anyway. Um, she's a um, young female Yuzirian and the ship's astrogator. Um, she's a bit, um, put it this way, the rest of the, the rest of the crew tend to call, have given her the nickname Frosty, um, because, uh, she's a little bit standoffish, a little bit, um, cold, cold and curt. It's just, that's just, just, just where she is. So yeah, there's her, she's the astrogator. Um, there's, uh, Castus. Wallop, who is um, the team, the Jetsam Team B Snape handler. Um, he's a uh, he's a young, muscular Yazirian, um, and uh, thoroughly, thoroughly does not like uh, robots or computers. And um, at the drop of a hat, will will be able to talk. You think for hours on uh, the advantages of safes over, and I quote here, soulless tin boxes. Um, he's actually an employee of um, uh, Renolf Associates who make the snakes. He's not actually a, uh, he's not actually a, um, 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 uh, an employee of uh, Biocom. So um, yeah, um, there is a, uh, an early middle-aged Vrusk, whose name is a Dakor El Kala. Um, he's the he's the uh, he's also from uh, the Jetson Team Beta. Um, one of the crew members on the Jetson Team Beta. Um, he's a robotics expert. Amongst other things, so um, Cerise, you tend to fall into a bit of a talking shop conversation with the boy. Is he uh, a? What's his species? He's a Vrusk. Vrusk, male. Yeah, like you. Um, Except I'm female. Yeah, I know. He's also middle-aged. You're not early middle-aged, <laughs> unless you've got a thing for older gentlemen. No, Helen, not really. 
Yeah. Ellen Cooperman is a human female. She's the chief engineer and uh, second in charge uh, of the uh, of the uh, of the money spider. Um, relaxed, friendly. Um, yeah. Um, there's also a uh, theator. God, I love these names, don't you? Uh, Fiata Gies, I think that's how it's pronounced. Um, he's the uh, he's a ship's technician, uh, and he's a young gravelite. Um, determined to make a career for himself in engineering. Uh, so yes. Um, so that's the crew, plus of course the captain, who's. Uh, who you know? Uh, I'll give you his name again, just to make, just to round things out, to make sure you've got it all. Because I really hate for you guys uh, to have a go at me for not giving you the information you think you need. Uh, and he's a male Vrask, of course, the captain, as Giz, uh, middle-aged. Um, so yes, so that's the uh, that's the crew of the Money Spider. And obviously, you're having you're having breakfast with uh, the first five. The captain's not there. Um, just as you're finishing up breakfast, um, a message comes over the intercom from the captain uh, asking uh, asking uh, you guys uh, to please come uh, to his cabin. Um, um, abstract, as soon as possible. Uh, he has some further things to discuss with you, he says. Um, most of the other crew, most of the other crew have uh, have have already finished breakfast and moved off to their um, uh, their duty stations. Um, so yeah, so you guys finish breakfast and uh, yeah, yeah. That's the captain. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. Um. So um. Where are we? So you make your way through the ship. Um, to the captain's cabin. Uh, just as you uh, reach the captain's uh, cabin, um, the uh, the chief engineer, Ellen Koopman, is just uh, just coming out of the just coming out of the captain's cabin, and she's looking a little bit upset. Who was coming out? The chief engineer, Ellen Cooperman. Okay. And second in command of the ship. Do we want to ask her really uh, quick? (laughs) Something wrong? Yeah, yeah. Terrible, terrible tragedy. The captain's gone and committed suicide. What? Yeah, I mean, have a look. Um... And she so she points to the captain's cabin and she moves to a nearby intercom and uh, calls the entire crew um, to the uh, the common room uh, as soon as uh, it says everybody should report to the common room as quick as as soon as possible. Uh, looking in the captain's cabin, the captain's sitting at his desk um, with a um, laser pistol clutched in his hand and a um, uh, um, hole in his skull underneath his mandible uh, and coming out the top of his the top of his skull um, clearly dead um, so yes and uh, there's a message blinking on his well there's not blinking there's a message on his on on his um, terminal screen which you can't quite make out from where you are oh uh, ask Ellen um... Well, she's and not we, oh. Well, well, she's near, but near enough. What do you want to say? What do you want to ask her? I just want to ask if uh, we have her permission to go in and kind of investigate the the scene. Yeah, yeah. Just come to get up, come up to the common room first, will you, please? Do you think we but can you... lock the cabin so no one can get in and and modify anything while we're away? 
That's a good idea. It's a very good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just um, just while you're there, have a look at that note. She says. So I'll take a look at the note. Yeah, I've got to find it now. I can't remember what I did with it. Oh, there it is. That's it. it was yep. his voice on the intercom that called us to his cabin, right? Or was it not? It was. So did everybody get that? Yep. Yep. Huh. Okay. So uh, once you've had a, a quick look at the note, uh, Ellen uh, ushers you out and locks the door uh, behind her uh, with um, a security code that she knows. Okay. Yeah. 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 So. Um, about 20, 20, 20, 25, 30 minutes later, everybody's assembled on the in the common room uh, where um, Koopman, Ellen Koopman, um, informs the crew that the captain has killed himself and a second in command, she uh, has taken command of the mission. She then turns to you and asks you to uh, please uh, describe uh, what took place on the Jetson. Well, they know that only the one crew member came back alive, right? I assume everyone uh, on the crew would know. Oh, they, they would know that by now, yeah. Yeah. While uh, something in the atmosphere of Venturi, uh, it, whether it was a life form or some something else, uh, affected the computer systems on the platform, making the defense turrets go rogue, the life support systems to dial down the uh, heat to negative 10 Celsius, um, to making the robots go haywire, to the food machines not working. The only solution was to turn everything up to 35 degrees Celsius. That stopped it. But, uh, we found that the sape handler had been eaten by the sapes. Oh! Says some of the crew members. That the computer technician died of radiation poisoning in the reactor room from a tear in her in suit. And that the team leader died in a freeze field when the power ran out. Because his freeze field, unlike uh, Sinclair, how Claire, whatever her name was. His freeze field was connected to this platform, and the virus killed him. Well, um, uh, as you're saying this, and as as uh, discussions go go on, um, look, um, Ellen is obviously skeptical of the entire story. Um, Barlow, uh, Baralu, the astrogator, seems cautiously, inter cautiously interested. Um, Dakor um, starts grumbling about getting back at the thing. In it, that's a, almost a direct quote. 
Um, the young, uh, the young, the young technician engineer, uh, Feyator, uh, he looks scared. Uh, and of course, uh, Castus uh, says he never did trust tin boxes. You know. Um, so yeah, um, can you all of you roll me a d20, please? I don't like a sets. It's better than a two. Did my mind go? I don't, think, doc. Went, did it. I don't think Ceres's went. I'll do one for Doc, too. Yeah, yeah I don't think Ceres's. No, it didn't look like I can't see Ceres's there. Um, That'd be right for you, Cat, wouldn't it? Come on over to private room one real quick, please, Cat. User left your channel. We're all going to die. We're all gonna die. We ain't getting paid, are we? Maybe not. So, did he write the note or did uh, Helen? I don't know. I mean, he was a Vrusk, and that kind of note made sense from a Vrusk. That doesn't mean he wrote it, though. Just somebody who I know, knows but... that it would make sense. But it's not like he lost any honor or loyalty. Not that we know of yet. Well, remember, the uh, the project was a failure, is what he said. User joined Whatever the project was, it did not go User as planned. So yeah, um, so after some discussion about how believable um, the story is, and obviously um, you know something affected the computers downstairs, down down there. Ellen doesn't believe it was a life form at all. Um, um, as I said, the others are scared or annoyed or whatever. Um, so after some discussion uh, and some quest, you know, some questions from everybody and things like that. Um, Ellen, Ellen, uh, wraps up the meeting, uh, and says that she, she'll contact the biochem, sorry, the biochem corporation and ask for a relief ship to be sent. Um, yeah. Um, so, uh, she directs everybody back to their duties. Um, and, um, uh, leans in towards, um, um, cat actually, and, uh, gives you a six digit code um and says that will get you into the captain's cabin um have a quick look around i intend to move i tend to move in there within by the end of the day so if you need to remove the body to do an autopsy or whatever by all means okay um so yeah um So yeah, so uh, what are you guys going to do? Go check out his cabin. Okay. So you head down to the cabin. Um, it's pretty much as when it's unlocked and the doors open. It's pretty much as you as you left it. What do you want to do in particular? Uh, well, I'll just mention what I heard uh, in the the meeting. Uh, that I heard the uh, safe handle sort of mutter something under his breath. Uh, so he, he seems to know something because he said, good thing that Frosty isn't in command. And then he said, I'll make sure that we have a way out. Um, so we probably need to go chat to him, maybe, or chat to Frosty, the astrogator. Uh, but yeah, something to look out for. Uh, but Kat would like to obviously uh try to find what she can in the terminal is it, is it currently unlocked uh yeah it is it is currently unlocked um let me just pull up the let me pull up the uh terminal oh that's the wrong one that's what i want 
Uh, where's terminal 12? There it is. Uh, okay, yep, terminal 12. Um, terminal 12 says it's connected to the MGL computer. Whoops, wait a minute. So that's the general computer, the general one, right? Yeah, yeah. It seems to be the way they've named their, named their systems. Um, M for money, spider, and G for general. Sorry, my uh, mouse jumped off the desk and broke into a bunch of pieces, and I had to put it back together. Um, Problem, that. Yeah. Okay, so that, that's the NGL, and that was terminal 14? Uh, 12. 12. The terminal 12 is currently connected to the MGL computer. Uh, the MGL computer has that suicide note on the screen at the moment. Um, yep. You, you, know it's, you know it's connected to the MGL because up the top of the terminal, up top of all the terminals, it gives the name of the computer that it's connected to in, in the header bar. Yep. Okay. Well, so that's, what, that's why you know it's the MGL. Yep. Uh, while I'm here, I may as well list the programs on the NGL. All right. Well, that will be a operate computer role and then a display information, obviously. The operate computer role first, please. Yeah. Okay. It's got uh, the MGL's a uh, level two. Um, it's, you know, I've got an actual, I actually found something the other day that I thought would be interesting. Um, so it's um, the main the main computer system for the Money Spider. It's a level two computer. Um, it uh, lists. Shit, I hate when they do that. Um, yeah. Um, Sorry, MGL, MGL, MGL. Uh, it's, uh, it, it lists its location as Deck 5 Strong Room. Yep. Uh, and has a, uh, a Communication 1 and an Information Storage 3 program on it. So MGL CN and MGL IF. Cool. Uh, cool. Uh, and do I? I may as well poke around. Uh, I'll do a display info on the information system to see if I can find anything related to the business that they're doing. Sure. I uh, know mainly. To... Sorry, go on. I was just going to say, did you check to see if the captain was the one last logged in and not? The first mate, chief engineer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he hasn't. He hasn't yet. Chief he engineer. Do it yeah. Um, the information storage system basically is the ship's library, music, videos, um, books. Yeah. Um, but there's nothing. Uh, there's nothing pertaining to the um, uh, details about the about you know what you're after. Is what I'm trying to say. Then, okay. how, where would this note have come from then? The information storage system. Oh. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, there's also um, a one-way link from um, something called the MMNAS to the information storage. Okay. Okay. Um, but that's about it. Okay, got it. Uh, huh. Yeah, and uh, can I, is the person who logged in visible just where like the terminal the computer oh. connected name is yeah well no but you can do a quick who am i oh, yeah. 
Um, and yeah, it's the captain. It's the captain's logo. Well, at least it claims it's the captain's logo. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. So yeah. All right. Well, I will say that if to to from what I can see right now, this note looks legit. Um, the doctor probably wants to do his stuff on the uh, captain, and we probably want to search around. Hmm. Oh, the other thing you find, um, sorry, in the information storage system, yes. you also find um, that layout of the ship. And that layout slash diagram of the um, of Snowball. Got it. Um, and I guess before I log out, uh, can I check out the uh, comms program as well, just to see what it's connected to and doing? Um, yeah. Um, pretty much controlling the communications of the ship the internal and external communications that's about it it's not connected to much else yeah cool. apart from the information storage i uh, i uh, assumed as much but after yeah. the last scene <laughs> i uh, want to check all that i can cool after the last scene you don't trust me no 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 just that <laughs> no 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 yeah uh, so yes. Anyway, so that's um, so that should give you some idea of what the uh, the ship and that um, look like in terms of where you're going and what you're doing. Did everybody get that map? And it's not just me. I don't have to share it. No, I've already shared yep. it with everybody. Cool. Um. So. So you are currently in the captain's cabin, which is on. Uh, a deck two in the captain's cabin, which is um, got to find it, 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 got to find it. That's deck six, that's deck five. I think I can find there is deck two M five is the captain's cabin. Uh, M five B to be accurate. Yeah, I was about M, to say. Yeah. M five M five A is um, a meeting room off the captain's cabin. Got okay. it. Uh, so that's deck two. Uh, they're two meter squares, by the way, guys, in case you weren't you were wondering. Cool. Okay. Um, uh, you'll find um, you'll find the sick bay uh, on deck five in M thirteen. Cool. Well, I guess uh, I'll have a bit of a search around physically. Okay. Give me a search roll, please. Charles uh, will do the same. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah, for what it's worth, but we'll get his search in. <laughs> Doc just wants to be looking at um, the the captain for yeah. signs of foul play, et cetera. But so right. will search. Well, give me a search with Doc too, but I'll make I'll make I'll make sure that I keep the the difference. Sorry, first, first one. one? Only. Yeah. Jazz will also want to take a look at the weapon i think it was the laser pistol and just see if he spots anything out of the ordinary mm -hmm.
All right. Um, Searches intuition and logic, so Doc should have made that one too. Yeah, I figured as much. Um, which of you has the highest intuition? Uh, Cats is 50, so probably not her. Mm, no, Jazz. Jazz is 50. Jazz is Doc 50. was 70 or 75. Intuition is 70. 70 for Doc. Oh, in that case, for ba Babu. Babu and Doc can both give me an intuition check, please. Okay. Can I have, uh, can I, over in private room one, can I have um, a, a jazz, please? User left your channel. Woo! Right. <laughs> Musical rooms tonight. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen that Ellen was awfully excited about getting into the captain's quarters. Yeah, I think she knocked him off. But I think she's a Sathar agent. <laughs> Working with the Star Devils. Exactly. User joined your channel. Hey, um, can Babu and Doc now go into the private room? User left your channel. That means you dead. Uh, <laughs> I know I'm getting there. User left your channel. I was caught off guard, like having to switch rooms because I had like that window buried under other windows, because I never get picked to go into the private room. Ah. Uh. So I was listening to a video the last session. Um, I was half distracted when I was listening, but uh, it sounded like <laughs> it sounded like Cat had a whole, or, or Ben, you had a whole lot of like computer mapping to do. Yeah, it was kind of like. User joined your channel. User joined your channel. But yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, um, yeah. So you're searching. You're searching the room. You're looking at the body. Um, and, and so on. Okay. Um, I saw jazz. something. Pat, do you have a oh. chem sniffer? Uh, I have an Atmos cat. That'll do it. Yep. All right. See what if do you, you can need? detect anything in the air. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I'll... air. <laughs> I will poke my Atmos cat and it'll give my reading, it'll, it'll give its reading back to me. Yeah, do a, a, a chemical analysis rolls run after. That will do it. No, it won't. That's the opposite of do it. Oh. That's the opposite of do it. <laughs> um, no, you have got no idea, I'm afraid, Kaz. Um, you don't know what it is. It's Sorry. A very it's dangerous sentence. substance called oxygen in the air. Actually, oxygen is a very dangerous substance if you're not careful with it. That's why I was saying that. I was going to say cats. Like, no, this is odd. I detect no oxygen in this air. <laughs> um, yeah, possibly. Jazz will 
point out to the uh, technicians and engineering guys uh, a spot on the pistol, the, the suicide weapon. Actually, it's, 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 more, it's, it's more accurately, accurately described as a, sm a small smear. Yeah, a, a spot on the weapon where there's a little bit of, <laughs> um, or a smear of uh, some kind of lubricant, graphite lubricant, I believe. Any idea what that's used for? Certainly shouldn't be on a pistol. Or a laser pistol, anyways. No, but it'd be on the hands of uh, the chief engineer. Yeah, well, they, graphite lubricant is one of those things that you technicians and engineers know quite a bit about. It is a, it is a common engineering lubricant, yes. So that would point to either... Um, so, so either the technician or the chief engineer would... It would not be unusual, or even the robotics expert, it would not be unusual for them to have this on their hands. Oh, not so much the robotics expert, um, but certainly the, the chief engineer or the ship's technician, yeah. Okay. And I'll point the obvious out. It was the chief engineer who was coming out of the captain's cabin when you first arrived. Yeah. And the captain called us a few minutes earlier, personally, on the intercom. Oh yeah, five ten minutes earlier. Yeah, but yeah. By the time you finished, by the time you finished breakfast, cleaned up, you know, went down and got down there, and yeah. Well, unless of course someone is trying to frame the uh, chief engineer or technician. Yes, that's always a possibility, isn't it? Um, but it's just a small little smear. Is, is it like barely uh, barely perceptible? Oh, it's. I mean, you needed to make your search roll to find it, to notice it, but it's, I mean, yeah, it's only, a, you know, maybe a centimetre long, if that. Um, okay. Again, the type of thing that if you had, okay, if you had lubricant on your hands and you picked up the pistol, it's, you could see it leaving that type of smear behind, for example. I think we should start throwing grenades. You always think we should start throwing grenades. And I still kill South R agents, don't I? Mm. Um, listen, guys, quick five-minute bathroom break, if you don't mind. Sorry. Yep. No problem. Right. for me. All right, back soon. Hey, Ryan, you going to grab me another drink? What do you want? Same. The mic's hard. Okay. I'll come All get right. it. I'll meet you halfway.
So did I miss anything while I was getting my drink? No, not really. So I'm back. Have anybody else? I'm here. Yeah, here. Yeah, yep. yep. Okay. Cat? Yep. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear you, mate. Um, yeah, so um, apparently there's a strange odour in the air um, and there's a smear of graphite lubricant on the pistol that the captain shot himself with. Apparently. That doesn't happen to remind... Babu of the uh, Tralazite uh, steam bath by, uh, soap, does it? No. Okay. No, but there is a Tralazite on board, don't forget. He might, he might have some. This is true. Um, so what do you want to do, guys? You want to take the body down to sick bay and do an autopsy, or...? That would be the doc um, with the autopsy. Obviously. Poke, poke. So, so aside from the, the smell, the... Weapon, well, it's not, a, it's not a smell. It's a trace odor, if that makes sense. But, uh, aside from the, the little bit of odor, odor the weapon, um, cat digging around the computers, was there anything else that we found, like, physically, like in the office? No, it's um, nothing out of the nothing out of the out of the ordinary. There's a uh, a rather a rather nasty looking dagger uh, in a wall mount display. Um, uh, Cat can uh, sorry, Cerise can tell you it's a it's a traditional hunting um, dagger, um, a, a very old or a reproduction of one that's very old um, from her culture. Um, apart from that. Um, some clothes, um, a few bits and pieces, some manuals, you know, things like that. Okay. 
Um, I'm sorry, Jazz will get some kind of bag or something just to to bag the and secure the pistol. Um, probably also take the take the clip out. Um, the clip, <laughs> okay. the clip also only has like. Actually, how how much SU has been depleted from the clip? Uh, it clips it's sitting at fifty percent. Ah, okay. What's the setting on the pistol? Ten. 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 Exactly what Jazz would do with a laser pistol setting. Yeah, well, it certainly make sure that the uh, it was it was going to kill him. All right, so um, Jazz will uh, take the clip out and then bag them separately and, and keep sure. them secure. Okay. Are you on your person or? Uh, yep. Okay. All right. Um, how you going? The, the, the captain is rather, I mean, he's, he's a Vrusk example. He's, he's not that easy to carry. How, how are you going to move him? Uh, is it stretcher from the bed bay? Uh, yeah, probably a good idea. So Doc and Cerise can go to the med bay and get the stretcher mm -hmm. while the other people finish investigating. Sure. Um, so when you make it, the, 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 it's only one floor down, one deck down the, um, uh, the med bay. Um, so down the lift shaft, um, and, uh, and down, um, the, uh, pardon me, um, it's a pretty good sick bay for a ship. It's pretty, it's a pretty good ship sick bay. Um, it counts as, um, a, um, um, uh, um, a facility in terms of um, skill checks, um, so you don't have to worry about uh, you don't have to worry about in the field, uh, the in the field stuff, which is good. Um, it's got four recovery couches, each with an attached freeze field, non-operative, not not turned on at the moment, uh, and equipment and supplies for several med kits. Uh, just that, that's just a quick cursory look through the glass. The, the, well, it's not glass. It's actually a, a clear perspex style plastic um, over the the, ha the hatch, the, the storage hatch doors. You know? Is uh, Hal Sinclair the person in the freeze field we rescued here? Or yes, they... he's okay. he's he's on one of the he's on one of the uh, recovery couches. Sorry, I should have said that. Um, thank you for reminding me. There's also a computer terminal in the corner, um, which is apparently connected to the um, MGL computer uh but not logged in does that make sense so yeah. this being like the actual medical bay we can heal how up or is he still frozen uh no he's frozen you needed it, you wouldn't do it here you'd do it back at a it, it's a med bay not a proper hospital it needs a proper hospital ah okay um it really needs a proper hospital uh to do it properly Oh, it's the bloody kids again. Sorry. Um, what else can I tell you about the? What else can I tell you about the? Um, um hang on. Oh wait, there we go. Oh, the sick day. Uh, not much. Um, yeah. So. Hmm. Yeah, that's what I can tell you. So uh, what do you want to do, guys? Oh, you want to do an autopsy, you said. Oh, no, you're getting a stretcher. That's what you're doing, wasn't it? Yeah, we went down to the med bay to get a stretcher. Uh, so you, you find a collapsible stretcher, uh, big enough for the rusk, for a rusk. Uh, take it back up. Um, it's going to fill the entire, sorry, the stretcher and two individuals carrying the stretcher will fill the entire lift area. Um, uh, so I have a volunteer to help carry the stretcher. Okay. Got the strength for it. Yeah. Okay. So who's going 
to the um, who's going up to the uh, who's going who's going downstairs to the stretcher with the stretcher while what's what, and what's everybody else doing? So you're carrying Babu, you're carrying one end. I assume Jazz is carrying the other, being the stronger. Oh, you're not that strong, are you, Jazz? No, Jazz is. Uh, well, Jazz is sixty-one. Oh, you are quite strong. <laughs> so I mean, if Jazz is one of the stronger ones, Jazz will happily help. Mm. Doc yeah. can. Doc is sixty. He can take one end. And oh, ba Babu um, was taking the other. So yeah, yeah, and Bab can take the other. I don't All think, right. and everybody else can finish up in the captain's quarters. All right. Uh, well. Um, so the stuff you did, you, the stuff you did on the terminal took a while, cat, obviously. Yeah. Uh, the searching took a while, and the shuttling back and forth with the stretcher took a while. Now all those things basically happened in parallel, effectively, working around each other. Um, so yeah. Um, so um, doc, if you are going to do an autopsy, it's it's going to take you a couple of hours. That's how long they take. Um, yeah. So uh, you'll be about halfway third of the way into that when everybody else finishes up um so what's what's what are the other what are the rest of you doing uh while doc finishes up this autopsy well um, uh, you know the uh, the odor the um that uh that cat was doing that the check was doing do we know if anyone else on the, the crew does any of them have that type of skill that they might be able to figure that out well the only person the only logical person would be the uh the engineer the chief engineer ellen um what about your theater. suspicious what about who gator theater geos the draw site wasn't he an engineer no he's only a technician he wants to be an engineer, but he's only a, he's only he's only a, a he's only a, a technician, um, a low level. Well, he's he's pretty he's pretty young, which means he's pretty green. So his skill, his technical skill, um, is not that high. I'm just looking for it now. This is one of the reasons why I want to get these modules into actual modules, like electronic modules because I've got to flip back and forth because the information is spread everywhere. If I had it all in the, I could just hyperlink it all. You know what I mean? Yep. Where is it? Sorry about this. Ah, um uh, you mean Fiator? Fiator Fiator the crewman. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's he you you you, you guys are more skilled than he is. Okay. In both robotics and uh robotics and technical skills. Um Jazz will ask Ellen what what kind of chat Well hang on. Uh, yeah, are you gonna go chat with Ellen, are you? Well, before anybody leaves, I, I would suggest that we don't don't raise any suspicions. <laughs> yeah. At least not alone. Well, at least not now. But yeah, uh, definitely Jazz, not alone. Yeah, Jazz is thinking to ask Ellen if she potentially can do a scan because we noticed a faint odor, if she might be able to identify that. Or well, at least Jazz was thinking to ask her if, if she has the ability to do that. Now, would, would anyone object to that, though? Well, your suspicious mind. She's, sorry, go on, Dan. She, you, might be, you might be able to say what I was about to. Yeah, she she's the prime suspect. Right? I don't know. I wouldn't, well, she's... She was coming out of the room. She's an engineer per the lubricant, the suspicious smell. She now is captain of the ship. So, you know, she had something to gain, if if nothing else, just a promotion. Well, that's motive enough. I mean, there's plenty of people stabbed their boss in the back. Literally, yeah, that's what I mean. 
Yeah, but uh, worst case, she lies about it, and we know, and we know that we can only take what, whatever she says with a grain of salt. Well, worst case, she says no, she can't do it. Best case, she says well, she can't do it. Well, but she's in command she, of the no, ship, and she could throw us she off. Drops the air out of wherever you happen to be on some day. Or she arrests yeah. us for sabotage, or right. Worst case, we're dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Worst case, no, we're dead. <laughs> well, I mean, he, to be to be perfectly fair, he's not wrong. She's not wrong. Um, she's paranoid, but just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they aren't out to get you. <laughs> it's the saying goes. I mean, even if we even if we identify the substance, it's not evidence enough to, if she's at fault, to do anything about it. So I think what we just do is, hey, we've got our suspicions. Let's keep them to ourselves, and you know, not trust her. I mean, for that matter, it could have been one. Of you, it could have been one of you lot last night. Yeah, but I mean. I, do we particularly care who killed the captain? I don't We're know. We're here to solve that mystery. So if we no, can get true. off alive, I'm happy with that. Oh, okay. Not very heroic of you, though. But we might find more information related to our other job. I think we already find the information related to our original job. You've got a yeah, lot of Yeah, but it. now I mean, things it's, have it's... changed. Yeah. Okay. So um, I I missed which deck and which rooms are the captain's quarters and our sick bay. Okay, sick bay's on sick bay's on deck three. Sorry, hang on, I'm getting myself confused now. Deck six. No, 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 no. no. Let me start again. Okay, deck two is the deck. Deck two is um. Oh, it's a little lift. It's a ladder shaft. That's going to make things interesting. Um, deck two is the ad, is the bridge in the admin deck, right? And the captain's cabin is uh, M five B, and the captain's ready room, if you like, is M five A. If you're watching okay. Star, if you're watching Star Trek, oh, uh, and yeah. I, by the way, I've started watching Star Trek Lower Decks. I'm finding it very very amusing. Um, so that's the captain stuff. The sick bay is on deck five, uh, and the sick bay itself is M thirteen. Okay, thank you. So uh, deck five is the sick bay and strong room deck. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and since you've got the map there, I'll, I'll just go. I'll just run through this real quick. Uh, so deck deck one's the airlock. Deck. Um, deck two is the bridge admin deck. Deck three is the engineering deck. Deck four is the maintenance deck. Deck five, sick bay, strong room. Deck six is accommodations. And deck seven is life support. Deck eight is cargo control. Okay? I think so, yeah. Do you want me to go through those again slowly so you can make, no, take no. some notes? No, no, okay, I don't mind. Yeah. All right. So deck one is the airlock deck. Deck two is the bridge admin deck. Deck three is engineering. Deck four is maintenance. Deck five sick bay is the sick bay strong room deck. Deck six is accommodation. Deck seven is life support. And deck eight is cargo control. Perfect. So, while Doc's finishing up this autopsy, what's everybody else going to be doing? 
Um, so I just typed in chat. Um, yeah, I just saw it. Hang on. Sure, not a problem. Jazz is taking Cerise's words to heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Babu will stay with Doc and assist where he can, you know, handing out yep. instruments or just in case something goes wrong there too. Sure, sure. Um, Jazz will stick around with Cat, I guess, if that's okay. That's fine. Um, I wonder whether we go... um sorry, sorry, something something I need to point um you do know Doc's got chemical skill, don't you? Ooh. So Doc can try also try that odor uh, Well he's only as... he's only got level one in it, but he has he has got it. It's part of his bot it's yeah, you know, it's it's part of the things he picked up. Oh, so can he use the the, the Kes, the Kem Kes? Yeah, if if the Kem Kes, yeah, if Cat wants so, to hand it over. So here's an analysis from Doc. Are you are you handing it over? Yeah, that's fine. No, <laughs> thought I'd ask. All right, over the private room, please. Doc. User left your channel. <laughs> I don't know if there's much worry about arousing suspicion, um, mostly because everyone already knows the captain's dead. So, so yeah. if other people hear us checking in with each other, be all like, oh yeah, that's probably a smart thing to do. I hear talking on the other side of the house. <laughs> um, uh -oh, it looks like uh, I need to step away for a bit. Um, let me type in chat real quick. User joined your channel. User joined your channel. So the doc gets a very interested look on his face. Uh, hey Matt, I yeah. just got called from my wife. I need to step away for a bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, How long's a bit? 10, 15, I, 20, half an hour? I think it's about about half an hour. I'll okay. try to get back as soon as, uh, as soon as I can. All right. Apologies. Yeah, it's all right. it happens. It happens. If we need big boon, if we need big boon, if we need Jazz's character, I've just cleared it. Just cleared it. Someone can pick it up later if we if we need it. Otherwise, whatever. Yeah, um, Doc will just say it. It might have been Doe's gas. I'll look for other signs of it when I do the autopsy. So, as I said, what's everybody else doing while the autopsy is going on? Just waiting around. Um, uh, I guess Cat might as well go off to the uh, safe handler. Oh, just, Curtis! Just to, just to see. I've forgotten myself now. And Volk will go with just as a buddy. No, yeah, right. I was gonna say. And then after that, Volk wants to go find where exactly he can find graphite lubricant on the ship. No, oh, the maintenance deck and the engineering decks would be the first place to start, wouldn't, mm -hmm. it? wouldn't it? I'm going to find whose workstation has it. Where do they keep all you, of it? You, you, you lot are suspicious. Always suspicious. It's terrible, you guys. It's, yeah. Um, yeah, Castus. Uh, uh -huh. So where would Castus be? 
So you find Castus, whoops, wrong one. You find Castus uh, Oh, pardon me, sorry. Uh, in the common room. Uh, the common room's on deck six, uh, M25. A, to be accurate, M25A. And is there anybody else within earshot? Um, not within earshot. Uh, he's, he's reading um, at the moment. Uh, it appears to be some sort of uh, technical, biological, technical manual on the safes. Interesting. Now, I wonder whether sending the the computer geek to this conversation was the best idea, but we'll see. <laughs> uh, uh, I would sort of, uh, sort of, if he's at a table, go sit beside him in a way that doesn't look too suspicious. No, he's, well, he's sitting at, a, at, a, at a, an armchair with a coffee table and a couple of other armchairs around it. Ah, oh, yeah, I just go sit down at one of those armchairs then. Mm -hmm. He looks up and goes, rough time on the Jetson. Yeah, it was a bit bit interesting down there. I'd, I'd never seen anything like that before. You said that the Sapes ate. Um, I've forgotten the name. Oh, I've forgotten the name. Hang on. Um, the Sape handler, basically, down there. Yeah, they. We we spoke to the Sapes, and they they had no other choice. The uh, whatever it was taking over the electronic systems down there took out their food supply. So they kind of. I can't of... believe. I, I, did they say they killed him? Uh, no, I don't. Th I don't. Yeah, they, they did. did. They said they had no other choice. Well, I can't remember whether they actually said that they killed him or whether they just had no other choice but to eat the body that was there. Uh, uh, I did. I, and... they, 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 they're they're nonviolent. They wouldn't have killed him, surely. Surely. Yeah. I, they seemed they seemed oh. very uh, apologetic and mm. like they had done something very wrong, uh, but they had no other choice. So, mm. I, I, oh. I, yeah. Sorry, go on. I, uh, I, I, I think that your intuition there is right. They did, they didn't actually mean harm. They just mm. were left with no other choice. Yeah. Uh, Vogue, you said you said you with Catwoman. Can you give me a quick um, spot check, please, Vogue? Sure. Um, the uh, GLLR5 gorilla sparring robot is um, standing over by the um, sparring pad, sparring mat, by the way. Just thought I'd mention that. Ah. Um, and, anywho. And I don't, suppose it's, I don't suppose it's 35 degrees in here. No, it's not. Be afraid. No, of it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a comfortable 22 and a half. Yeah. But it's certainly uh, not minus 10. Yeah. Um, actually, it's 20, it's 20 degrees, not 22, sorry. It's 20 degrees centigrade. Uh, standard oxygen, one gravity, standard pressure. As it is throughout the whole ship. Well, the ship that you can get to anyway. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll say. Oh, by the way, there's a couple of computer terminals in here as well. Oh, uh, they the the twelve and twelve on the map. There? Yes, they are yeah. the twelve and twelve on the map there. Just thought I'd mention that to you as well. Cool. Uh, I will just mention. Hey, it looked like you. Uh, it looked like you were a little bit distressed this morning when the news happened. Like you were suspicious of somebody. Ah, oh, bloody computers, bloody robots. I mean, look at that thing over there. You know, goes and attacks one of us several days ago, and they still keep it online. You can't trust them. You cannot trust tin boxes. No, you, you said something about that you were glad that Frosty wasn't in charge and that you're going to need to make sure you have an escape route. We've got to get off. We've got to get out of here if something goes wrong. 
I mean, if 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 this if if what you say is true about this this or this this electronic virus organism thing, um, then we need a you know we need a we need a way out, don't we? Or you just um, turn it before, up to thirty five degrees centigrade Celsius. Well, that's a way. Well, that's a way out, I suppose. Now, look, Frosty. Look, she's a good she's a good aggregator, and but she's really. Oh, I mean, we call her Frosty for a reason. You know, she's, you've talked to her. She's a little bit, you know, cold, shall we say. You know, keeps to herself type thing. Yeah. So right. I don't think she, I don't think she would have made a good, she, she would not make a good captain, put it that way. Not yeah. in my opinion anyway. Not in my opinion anyway. She doesn't, she, 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 she tends not to like the sapes either, I must, I must admit. Now, being honest, I suppose that could be making me a little bit biased. Yeah, you know, I mean they're beautiful creatures, the sapes. So you know, seriously, I mean they they they're cheaper than robots. They they because they're um, intelligent, they can actually do some, uh, make some decisions on their own. Um, you know, they they're self they're self replicating. You know, you can't say that about a robot. <laughs> and so he and he starts he starts launching into this. Yeah, you know, um, a diatribe, shall we say? <laughs> so, yeah, um, feel free to interrupt me at any time. What, what, what way out are you do you have planned? What do you think is going to go wrong here? Nothing, I just like being prepared. Um, as I said, if if you know. If, the way you described some of the robots down on the Jetson was sort of reminded me of, of what of what that thing did. He points over his shoulder towards the GWR five. Um, you know, I mean, actually, since you since you left, we've had no problem with it. To be honest, I mean, you know, as painful as it is for me to admit, but uh, you know, if something does go wrong, I just you know, don't you think it's prudent to have a have an escape plan, shall we say? Yeah. Any other problems like the robot happened while we were gone? No, nothing. Not a thing. Well, that's good. I, f I feel like it's fun to just piss gasoline on a fire here. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't, don't forget, you're a, though. You're a, you're, a shit, you're a shit stirrer. You know that, don't you? Don't forget, though. Uh, it took over our shuttle computer as well. Uh, and if we did hadn't, it? we if hang on. We had, no, this 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 is GM the player. Did it? Yeah, we had to scrub the the shuttle computer on the way back. Oh yeah. Because uh, we 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 went we went through a process of mm -hmm. I, I'm just, looking yeah, at that. Yeah, yeah. All good. Uh, so yeah, if you're yeah, you better be careful with uh, computers on ships as well. Uh, and I guess Kat will leave it at that. Mm -hmm. um, at that point, uh, I guess if folk wanted to go around to uh, the engineering decks and figure out where he could find that lubricant, that would be fine. Otherwise, we okay. could go chat to Frosty. Uh huh. What? Uh, what were you now? What were the other two of you doing? Who weren't doing the autopsy? That would be Cerise and that would be Cerise and uh, Cerise and uh, Jazz. So since Jazz isn't here, Cerise wanted to go up and talk to the new captain. Um, Ellen, a yep. Things, a couple of things I'd like to uh, purge the. Purge the ship and Snowball, uh, Money Spider and Snowball, um, by bringing them up to temperature for a couple of hours just to make sure that any of the virus from Jetson does, if it had managed to get here, it would be purged. And the second thing I was wondering about, um, when we might uh, find uh, a ship to, when, when the next ship in system is coming. Uh, well, if you'll probably find her. You'll probably find her on the bridge, or in the captain's ready room. Um, 
So that's up on deck two. Okay. Uh, M3 is the bridge, obviously. So, yeah, they would go up there. All right, well, um, she's currently uh, sitting. Hang on, let me tell you exactly where she's sitting. Ah, oh, stupid thing. I'll be right back. Yeah, mate. Uh, she's currently sitting at um, uh, Terminal 2 um, underneath the big uh, observation dome in the middle of the, um, of the bridge there uh, doing some stuff on the computer uh, when, you, when, you, when you come in. Uh, she looks up at you as, as you come in and, 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 uh, and says, uh, did you find anything interesting? Yeah, just kind of shrug and say, eh, not really. Doc's going to do an autopsy, but did have um, a concern that I wanted to bring to you and then also a question. Sure, she says, uh, shutting, down, shutting down her, you know, logging off from the computer and turning to face you in her chair. I know it's probably, you know, being maybe a little paranoid, but it seems like maybe it'd be a good thing if um, we we purged Money Spider and Snowball just to make sure in case any of the virus has gotten on board. Um, if we just take all the areas up to 35 uh, degrees for maybe two hours or something, I don't know what the engineers are going to say. Well, you would know your ship better than us, how long it would take to get all the components, all electrical systems and so on, up to that temperature, just to purge the virus, um, if there happens to have been a contamination here. No, she, she, slightly, she slightly rolls her eyes and shakes her head. As, I mean, she, she's, she doesn't believe you in terms of, a virus, of there being a virus. Um, she's incredibly skeptical of it. So... Um, give me a personality role, please. All right. This is going to take some good luck. Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> and, and, um, Cerise shrugs. I know, I know it's being paranoid, but you know, abundance of caution you know, scientific endeavor wouldn't want anything adverse to, to affect your command here or the, the profitability of, of Money Spider. Yeah. I really don't think that's necessary, do you? Really, seriously. I mean, you know, I mean, I understand you guys want to, you know, collect your pay and that's coming to you. Don't, there's no, no, um, Nothing about that. You know, you signed a you signed a, a, a contract with a captain, and and, uh, and and so all that. But I mean, you know, if if you couldn't work out what happened down the Jetsam, you just could have said so. Um, you didn't have to make up this this story. Um, so yeah, uh, I mean, raising the temperature of the entire ship to thirty five degrees is is no small thing. You know what I mean? So yeah, I, I don't think we're going to be doing that. She says. Well, I, it absolutely your call, but you know, a couple hours of uncomfortable versus you know something bad going seems to be a, a good uh, a good trade off. Um, anyways, this that that's your decision. Um, the other thing I was wondering is if you had any inbound system ships. You know, we're looking to we, we've done what the captain contracted us to do and and uh we're ready to move on unless you have more work for us well as i said i as i said earlier today um i'm i've i was going i've contacted biochem uh biochem and um and asked for the relief ship uh to come and get us um the uh it'll be here in about uh, so I'm doing some mathematics in my head. 
uh, in about 12, be here in about 12 days. Um, so unless, unless somebody uh, misjumps like your original freighter did uh, by chance, and, and when she says by chance, she glances at you. So she's starting to, she, she may be suspicious of the fact that how convenient, you know. Um, but uh, so 12 days, uh, you're our, you're, you know, you're an employee of the company until then. Okay. Um, well, if, you have, so. if you have things you'd like us to do, we're certainly happen, happy to, uh, to contribute however we can. Yeah. And I, yeah, well, that'll be helpful. For that other astrogator's name, because I'm never riding on a ship she plots. What, Frosty? Ah, oh, she's all right. No, no, the one from the the tramp freighter that brought us in. Oh, him? Yeah, yes. Wow. Well, let's let's face it. I mean, tramp freighters are tramp freighters for a reason, and they usually don't they don't hire the best people normally. They hire who yeah, they can the get. No, I thought you were talking about Frosty. Frosty's quite, no, a, good I, uh, quite a good gastrogator. Not very personable, but, you know. But then again, I don't find... Uh, please don't take offence. Oh, no, hang on. No. Um, that was, I, was, I went off on a t mental tangent. I should have shouldn't should not have gone down. Don't mind me. Um, yeah, uh, so, yeah. But no, um, well, uh, you'll certainly... It's certainly having ex the, the extra six of you aboard is going to help out uh, with running of the ship and snowball, um, so that should be should be that shouldn't be too bad. Um, but um, there's not much to do really. Uh, keep the ship, you know. Let uh, let the other crew members um, know when if uh, when you see them that you're available to be called on for help. But apart from that, we've pretty much got things under control in terms of the holding pattern. We'll be in for the next twelve days or so. All right. Well, if uh, I don't know if you know Vogt's an engineer, I don't. I'm sure he doesn't have your experience, but uh, if he can help with things, um, and we'll oh, that's that's through. handy. That's yeah. very handy. Yeah, yeah. We'll, he might we'll be worth. It might be. Through. Yeah, it might be worthwhile getting Vogt down to the engineering deck just just to stand uh, just to stand watch um, over the engines. Not that they're working at the moment, but the, but the reactors are on. Yeah, I don't I'm like sure leaving them unattended. The mm. So yes. Oh, uh, anything else? I've got to get back to some nope. stuff. She says. Thanks for your time. Mhm. Mm see you. Uh, see you dinner. She says. See you later, Captain. Mhm. Mm um. So, uh, do you want to give me a um? An autopsy roll. Now, what will you what we'll use for that is perform autopsy because it's actually listed. <laughs> hmm. It's like they would think, you know. Oh, I think that's one we invented because we needed it earlier. <laughs> All right. Um, the apart from being slightly, uh, sli well, not overweight because rust don't get overweight because you know, but being slightly unfit. Carrying a little bit too much cholesterol in the in the bloodstream, shall we say? Um, the captain was in pretty good health, apart from um, the laser blast uh, which entered underneath uh, the mandibles and exited um, near the uh, just to the rear of the top of the uh, the skull. Uh, the brains are actually uh, cauterized and fried. Death would have been instantaneous. Um, very very little blood, obviously, because of the cauterization effect. Um, uh nothing shows up in the tox tox report toxicology report um so if there was those gas used it was there's no trace of it um if it was used um now that means that could be either that could be anything from from there was was none right through to there was massive there was massive amounts and you just didn't see it <laughs> okay right um but at the moment i mean as far as you're aware the tox the tox ecology report is saying there's nothing unusual in the in the bloodstream uh, there's a little bit of alcohol um but that could have been from dinner last night um because the alcohol takes 12 to 36 hours to 
get out of the system. Um, it certainly, it, it was certainly not death by alcohol or death by ethanol. Um, it was, you know, um, and being the suspicious individuals you are, I'm assuming you're doing as thorough an autopsy as you possibly can. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So, yes, yeah, so that's, that's it. Uh, yeah. And focusing, you know, also looking for other poisons, the dose gas. Um, yeah, there's nothing in the toxicology report. I said it's some trace amounts of alcohol, probably from last night. Um, yeah. And, you know, ele elevated cholesterol levels because he was a, he was, you know, a middle-aged rusk. And so like, just like a middle-aged, middle-aged anyone, we tend to put on a few, a few pounds. As I'm sure you are aware. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's about it, really. Um, you can't tell much about the brain condition because it's wrecked. Um, but there was nothing in the captain's uh, mannerisms or that when you were interacting with him before his death, both before you went down and after you came back from the jets and to indicate any sort of mental impairment. Okay. And you don't get to be a captain of a ship um without going through some psych evaluations so the you can make the assumption and i know making assumption makes an ass out of you I mean, you can make the assumption that he was he was pretty sane at least when he last had his evaluation whenever that was okay so yes Um, so, uh, you're down, Kat and Voke are down talking to, um, uh, Curtis, not Curtis, oh, what's his name? Hang on a sec. Uh, what am I doing? 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 Cast when uh, Cerise leaves the captain, he'll do a comm to the other budget crew. Uh, hey guys, just talk to, uh, captain. Uh, uh, sorry, are you using the ship's comms? No, no, our comms. Okay, all right. Um, yep, that's fine. Uh, she expects a, a supply ship in 12 days and um, help out the crew as you can. And she even suggested, Voke, that you might want to go down to engineering and take a shift down there. I'll respond, all right. Mm -hmm. And Jazz will respond as well. Sounds sure. good. All right. Uh, so as I was saying, you know, where's these, I'm going to write these down for myself. I need to. There it is. So you're got, you guys are down talking to Cast, Castus still in the, in the, uh, Um, uh, common room, ship's common room. Um, what do you want to do? Well, do do do. I guess I will go check out engineering. You going with it? You going with him, Cass? Cass? Yeah, yeah, I'll go with. Him. All right. Well, engineering obviously is on um, deck three. Yeah, I'm thinking for the number. Uh, deck three, 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 deck three. Oh, the entirety of deck three. Yeah, it's tiny. Yeah. Uh, deck three. Uh, so deck three, there is a. Um, it's. Uh, uh, it's the status and operation of the ship's engines. Uh, are indicated on panels located around the walls. Um, there is a uh, a terminal, obviously, in the uh, in the room. Uh, probably an engineering terminal. Probably. <laughs> um, what did I say? Was it terminal? I'm 
might be terminal 10. It is terminal 10. I'm trying to find it on my on my computer map. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, terminal 10. Uh, yes, it is terminal 10. Um, and it's uh, apparently connected to the MMN. Okay. Uh, but not logged in. Not logged in? Okay. No, not logged in. Well, uh, there's nothing but that terminal in here, right? No graphite lead? Oh, I, no what? Sorry? No graphite um, lubricant? Not here, no. No, no, no. No, it's pretty clean, actually. Um, it, uh, you've seen you've seen in the movies pictures of uh, nuclear station, nuclear uh, power station control rooms. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, those. Yeah, that's that type. It's that type of thing. Ah, it's that type of place. That's a lot of buttons. Well, it's a lot of dials and that. Most of it would dials. Be, it's it would a be lot of it. It's just a lot. It's a lot of instruments, but not many controls. Most of the controls would be done by the by the computer. Well, uh, let's go to the technician deck then. Which is deck uh, four. Four, yeah. I'm just looking at the map here. Deck one, deck two, deck three, deck four. There's deck four. So, good old deck four. Um, so you come out into uh, the workshop area, which happens to be area M8. Um, and um, apart from uh, some, you know, laser lathe, things like that, things you expect in a workshop on a, on a starship, um, there's uh, access to two work pods. Um, there's um, a panel with, M -M -M with MMT. Uh, label on the outside probably gives access to the actual uh, physical guts of the MT computer um, and a terminal, of course, uh, which happens to be terminal five. Uh, not that that makes a difference. Um, terminal five um, at the moment is connected up to the MMT computer. It can also be connected up to the MGL computer. It's not logged in, though. Okay. I'm looking for graphite lubricant. Uh, that'll be a search roll, please. Uh, yeah, you do manage to, you do manage to find some in one of the storage in one of the storage lockers. But it's not at someone's workstation or anything like that. Nope. Properly stored away. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know if Cat wants to come with me to inspect all the three engines and then go back to the engineering deck. Yeah, we can do that. So I'll just go down all the long hallways to the uh, three different engines. Look for anything unusual or out of the ordinary or graphite lubricant. Take it, Matt's looking up something. 
sorry, I forgot I forgot I was on mute. Yeah. Um you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so as I was saying, sorry, the um I long explanation, I think I do it definitely gonna have to do it again. Um the entire deck's reading twenty five degrees Celsius, not twenty like the rest of the ship. Uh, that's not that unusual. There's reactors nearby. Um, standard pressure, standard gravity, standard um, uh, oxygen. But the airlock door leading into corridor M10 um, is reading radiation one, whereas the rest of the ship's been reading, reading radiation zero. There are um, bah, 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 how many? Eight. There are eight insuits, uh, two of each species. Uh, in the uh, in uh, the M9 airlock. Okay. Yeah, then I'm not going to go in. I'm good. What about you, Cat? You going to go in? <laughs> With uh, engineering one, probably not. Yeah, it's not even spaceship engineering. It's just regular engineering. But I mean. Radiation out that airlock is completely normal as well, right? Sorry, uh, sorry. Radiation inside the airlock, as in in the M10 corridor, is radiation one. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's that's, that's normal oh, for like an engine. Oh, that's that's normal. That's no, Well, that's normal for a that's normal for a, for being near a nuclear reactor. Yeah, yeah, or atomic reactor. It's not. A, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, radiation can be a bit, bit more worrying. Um, that that probably would probably indicate there's an actually exposed core or something. But no, radiation one is just what you expect to find in that type of area. As I said, the rest of the ship is radiation zero. So, yeah, um, I don't think this would be the one area that if if folk you've been told to to come down here and check out the engines this would be the one area where i'd have a quasi excuse to hack into the system um do we want to try that or are we gonna be in a holding pattern until we know more i don't know we might well we could ask for the logon codes from the captain, because if she wants me to do engineer work, I'm gonna need log on codes. That's true. I mean, if you can reach out to her via comms, then it's probably a good thing to do. Yeah, I'll uh, try to find the communicator internally through oh, the ship. Yep, yep, it's an internal communicator there, yep. To reach the captain and ask for, I heard you wanted me to work on the uh to work as an engineer on the ship for uh the short meantime uh do you have log on codes i could get for that or is there anything i need yeah to know? yeah no nothing you need to know um uh, well nothing outside your area of expertise she says um yeah look i'll uh, i'll set you up with a uh, a username and password just give me five minutes gotcha and i'll call and i'll call you back so about five minutes go, five six minutes goes by, and uh, the intercom uh, indicating the bridge lights up, and says, um, "There you go. Um, uh, username, Voke, uh, access code." And she rattles off an access code for you. Cool. That should get you into the maintenance computer if and when you need to. Uh, don't go playing around, please. <laughs> she says. Of course not. Uh huh. Um, so, are you logging on, or what are you doing? Uh, yeah, we'll log on to the Terminal 5. Mm-hmm. Me Insufficient access. All right, we'll go to Terminal 10. Me insufficient access. Ah, she doesn't trust me, huh? Okay. Well. Hmm. Hmm. This time we'll go to the engineering deck and ring her there. Bridge, says the captain's voice. 
Well, the chief engineer's voice, I should say. Uh, let's see. You said the password was blah, 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 right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm trying Why, to just make sure everything works just in case of emergency. And uh, it's not. It says I have insufficient access. Hang on a sec. She says in a, in a puzzled voice, and you can hear you can hear her typing on a keyboard. And goes, "No, it should be okay. Try that again." I'll do it again. This is insufficient access. Is there a thermostat in the engineering deck I can turn up to 35? Uh, there is. You know how you access it? From the God life support damn it. system. I'll ask her to turn it. Thing, the whole thing's computer controlled, dude. There's no manual controls anymore. We'll get real. <sighs> okay. I kind of say, do you want me to try? <laughs> You're going to hack it, are you? Hmm. Do we do that, or do we try to convince her to turn the entire ship up to 35 degrees Celsius for a while? I'll, I'll go on the Chronicom and talk with everybody. Say what's going on. Say that either okay, she's not letting me on, or we have an issue. All right. Well, what is you, right as you're doing that, um, an alarm starts going off throughout the entire ship. Everybody hears this, and you've just finished up your autopsy, Doc. By the way. So it's the ladder. Then we have an issue. <laughs> well, uh, maybe not. Um, over the intercom system comes a uh, distress message. Um, yeah, uh, should make a distress, uh, should make a distress, uh, a distress, um, a distress message, um, uh, an SOS distress message, uh, coming from the, um, coming from, uh, well, it, it sounds like, it sounds like, uh, Cactus's voice. And he is... The safe handler. The safe handler. Ah. All right. Uh, I guess that would be us running to deck six. Well, yeah. Um, but apparently, um, as uh, as you're on your way to deck six, um, Ellen, uh, what's his oh, I've got name now? Yeah. Her voice comes back over the system. Um. The lifeboat's been launched. Curtis, bring that back, she says. Over why don't, the, right, yeah. Cat, why don't you and I go to deck seven? What's on deck seven? Life support. Oh. Oh, yes, so it is. Um, so yeah, so there, so um, apparently um, it sounds like uh, Kurt, uh, Curtis has um, um, taken the um, the lifeboat, life pod, and is um, transmitting a a um, distress beacon, distress call. Okay. What's everybody doing? Not just you two. What's what are the others doing? Oh, oh, I thought okay. Um, Doc will put uh, the body in cold storage. <laughs> yeah. Do the work pods have like grabbers that could grab the lifeboat? Uh, yeah, I've got an idea, but, you know, you don't know whether, well, you, yeah, I mean, we were, do. we were down there, we were looking for stuff. Yeah. Would that be a technician skill to pilot a work pod? 
it'd be operate machinery and it would count as um, an air car at the lease. So you need at least level four. Not me. I don't know how, what else the ship has in capabilities of bringing it back. Well, none, apparently, from what you've been hearing. Well, so what are you, what are you doing? Cat, Cerise, Doc, Voke, and Babu? Cerise will head to deck four and, and uh, calm the captain. Should we try to use the work pods to bring back the um, lifeboat? I don't know whether they'd have the range. He's, he's a fair way out by now. She says, I don't know what's got into him. So Cerise will go to the work pod and, and start getting ready, but she's going to wait for the captain to give the order. Yeah. Or something else. Yeah. Well, He's too far gone. She's, she, she doesn't ever give that order. In her opinion, he's too far out to make it worthwhile. Um, so, uh, so, yeah. Is she given any other orders? Not at this stage. She's still trying to talk Curtis back in, but he seems to be ignoring her and simply, um, simply uh, doing, a, doing his, his thing, you know, uh, his uh, distress call. Is the life pod actually powered, or is he kind of just floating in? Oh, sorry, orbit? life life lifeboat, as opposed to pod. My fault. Sorry. Okay. Uh, yes, it's powered. Okay, so he's he is uh, not falling towards jetsam or anything like that. No, 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 definitely not. Okay. Cooper, so communications link somewhere here where I could call the life boat. there is there is right before you do that though can you can I can I have you can I have you over in private room one please user left your channel All right. user left your channel hmm well this is strange I'm not sure if we should turn up, turn the temperature up to 35 degrees or go in a work well, pod yeah. without authorization or. I don't see why. User joined your channel. User joined your channel. So Babu gets onto the comm system and says, Hey, we need you to come back. This is important. And I just missed it. And you just missed it. Sorry, dude. Uh, there was also there was also a bit of a penalty there because you normally yeah, do that face to face and this is done over radio. Extremely so extremely calm to me. Somebody that seems to be agitated over something. He sounds very calm. Mm, okay. All right. Well, also over the also over the uh, uh, um, uh, over the comm system. Um, Dacors, the um, uh, the male Russ crewman. Uh, he, he, you know, I'm going to get that electronic bug that killed my friend. I'm going to smash the damn ship apart if I have to. Um, Ellen and uh, Fiator both get on the comm and try and calm, uh, calm him down. Uh, they're not doing that much good uh, in calming him down. Uh, anyone want to do anything? Hmm. Um, 
Yeah, I think Jazz and Cerise were down at the work pods. Where's everybody else? So a uh, location well, check, everyone. Uh, Doc's um, up at the um, uh, Doc's at the, in Sick Bay. Yep. And um, who's at the closest comms unit to that? Which would be Sick Bay. Um, Cat and Voke were down in uh, deck seven. In deck seven, along with you, Cerise. Yeah. I think I was on deck four at the work pods, and Jazz, deck four. Jazz is with me. Yeah, yeah, so that's where everybody is. You're splitting the three groups at the moment. Is the lifeboat gone from deck seven? Um, hang on. Or is it the one from deck one? Uh, no, it's the one from deck one that's gone. Okay. Which I think, hang on, let me just, let me just confirm that. I'd, I'd hate to give you a bad, bad, um, bad, uh, bad thing. Yeah, it's the lifeboat. Yeah, it's the one from deck one that's gone. And the one at deck seven is still there, right? Uh, the one at deck seven is still there. Um, if you're thinking about taking it out, it's probably a bad idea. No. I was, no, I was just, let's, there's temperature controls there. Let's, let's meet at deck seven. That's on our internal, on, not on the ship's comm, on our comm link. All right. What are you doing about Dackel, though? He seems to have been, be going a little bit off his nut at the moment. And where is he? Um, he would be, well, he started out in his cabin on deck six. So where he's gotten to now, I don't know. But um, there's a lot of interesting stuff on deck six that could be smashed, for example. Just say that he needs to uh, smash up sparring robot. That'll that'll sort mm. him out real quickly. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? No, but we should probably go to deck six. Yeah, yeah. and it's Dagor, you said. Dagor, yeah. I, I, Dagor, D A Q O R. I I would say to Voke and uh, whoever's with Voke, you guys stay on seven. We'll. We'll see if we can help Dagor on on six. Uh -huh. Okay, we'll stay at what, seven. What are you doing, uh, Doc and Babu? Doc Doc's gonna see if he uh, can take some uh, sedatives from Med Bay. Yeah. Problem. And uh, in a syringe, hypo spray, whatever, and go mm -hmm. to deck six. Uh -huh. What about you, Babs? What are you doing? Stick with the Doc. Um, are you going to use some of your skills on Dakel when you get to him or not? Yeah. I mean, I got them. I might as well, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. That's, that's done. I don't have to worry about that anymore. Good. I don't, I don't think Matt was meaning your force axe skills. No, I was oh. not meaning your force axe skills. <laughs> No, no. Oh, I've got me, either communications or empathy or well, it, it's I it's your psycho, it's your psycho snakes, it's your psycho skills. So this is yeah. this is this type of situation is exactly what they what they, why they employ psychologists on yep. ships and bases and that for, to this type of stuff. Okay, so you eventually, those of you, uh, uh, you eventually reach deck six. Um. Um, 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 and um, Dakor is currently uh, has currently taken a uh, um, a large wrench and he's beating up the he's beating up the GWLR uh, robot at the moment. Um, and seems quite, I wouldn't say in a frenzy, but just quite upset. Um, so what do you guys want to do? Oh, he's swearing at it. Um, damn electronic bug, I'll get you rid of you. <laughs> so what do you guys want to do? So what's he saying that to? To the robot? The robot. The robot. At the moment, the G, the, G, the gorilla robot. The GWLR uh, rec bot. Recreation. Does it bot. look injured? Does the robot look damaged? Oh, it's got a few dents in it. If he keeps going the way he will, he'll smash it completely. But it's not defending itself. 
is it active? It's turned on. It's not defending itself. That sounds like uh, psychopathology. Yeah, it's the one, mate. Are you going to try that on him? Yep. Why are you hurting that poor thing? It's, it, it's, it's got the bug there around her. Okay. Um, look, um, within a couple of moments, a couple of minutes of you trying to use this, you'll realize that he's, he's too far gone for that. Um, oh, so it is for sex therapy. No, it's not. <laughs> I think that's your cue, Doc. Okay. So, well, uh, Doc's not going to try to uh, do the sedative and, until um, Babu has calmed him down enough to, that I can get mm, close to him. Well, he's not going to be calmed down uh, enough. Um, at that moment, uh, um, both uh, Ellen and uh, Fiator arrive. Well, do something, she says. So, Babs, you want to grab him and I'll poke him? I don't say that out loud, but I suspect with looks, he could get that message pretty easily. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now if I can remember correctly, that's just a uh, melee base? Yeah, it's just a, it's a, it's a, it's a melee like base. strength? No, it's a, well, it's a grapple roll. So it's a, it's a, unless you, if you've got wrestling or martial arts or something like that, which is what wrestling would fall under. Um, yeah, but other than that, it's just a straight melee roll. Hey guys, sorry, uh, I am back. Okay, um, your character should be free. And no need to uh, roll up a new character. Yeah. Uh, so yes, <laughs> yeah. you, you've made. So yeah, give me a strength roll, please. Um, uh, please, um, Babs. Yeah, that's going to be enough. Um, so he's you've got him pinned. He's thrashing around. Let me go. We've got to get rid of this thing. Right. Yeah. That's to poke him. Yep. Okay. Technically, it should have been a a, a, a melee roll, but you can use your dexterity for melee. Um, so yeah. Um, and um, you hit him with some uh, some. Um, you hit him with some um, uh, sedative, and he eventually uh, goes under. We better we better strap him into we better strap him into a uh, into one of the couches in sick bay. I think says uh, says Ellen. Um, yeah, help me take him down. Yeah. Right. So uh, you go on down to uh, to deck five, um, and um, the captain and. Uh, and uh, fail tall and you, Doc, um, strap him securely to a uh, one of the recovery couches. Okay. So yeah, um, I don't know if Doc can do any type of medical evaluation or if Babu can do anything. I uh, probably it, it'll probably well when it, once he wakes up, Babu might be able to do something. But he's out of it for he's going to be out of it for at least a couple of hours. The man of the man of sedative you gave him. So a diagnosis roll, see if I can you know do some blood tests, that sort of stuff. Oh, that type thing, yeah, you can do, you can do that now if you want. A diagnosis roll will, will do it. Yeah, he's got nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing. Again, the, the the blood toxicology report shows nothing unusual. Um, he's not under the influence of of any drug or anything, uh, and, illicit, um, or, illicit or otherwise. Apart from the sedative you've got him on. Right, and just check his body for bruises, cuts, things like that. Oh, his that, knuckles. But... His knuckles. He's got a few bruises and cuts on his on his knuckles, where he where he's been laying into things. But apart from that, he's not. He's all right. No vampire marks on his neck. Oh, no, no, we're not. We're not doing space vampire adventure. Okay. Um, so yeah. And does, um, does the crew have a medic? Um, no, not anymore. 
is one of the individuals who died in the rescue attempt. You know, when they sent down the first the first shuttle. Yep. Yep. Um, it was he, he was one of the that individual was one of the members of that of that shuttle crew uh, that was lost. However, it was lost. Huh. Wow. Well, it makes sense to it makes sense to send the medic down on a on a rescue mission like that. You know yeah. what I mean? Is there anything you want to do, guys? Well, I don't see many options to bring back the lifeboat, especially now that it's even further gone. Mm-hmm. Ask the... Uh, um, no, I just report to the captain that... Uh, well, the captain's right. Oh, yeah. Oh, did the captain come to sick bay? Yeah, she helped, was... carry, she helped carry. She um, helped carry. Oh, that's up. right, Ellen Cooperman. Mm-hmm. Ellen Cooperman, the engineer and acting captain. So yeah. Um, anything you guys want to do in particular? No. No, not really. Okay. Um. Well, you've spent quite a lot of time during the day doing all this. Um, um, it's getting on towards uh, evening evening meal time. Um, so eventually you all end up um, uh, the um, three remaining four, well, three of the four remaining crewmen because the fourth one's sedated um, and yourselves um, meet up for um, uh, yeah, end up having dinner um, uh, together um, in the galley. Well, next to the galley in the common room. Um, everyone looks. I mean, um, Ellen looks a bit worried. Um, uh, Theator uh, looks still looks scared, um, uh, and Baralu, um Appears, um, wow, well, not disinterested, but just her normal cold self, shall we say. Um, during the meal, she asks a few more questions of you about this this um, uh, virus thing that you reckon uh, you reckon is uh, was on Jetsum. She seems interested in that. Um, uh, when uh, when Ellen overhears that conversation, she just rolls her eyes and shakes her head slightly. Um, so uh, so yeah, uh, there's some talk about um, why Curtis did what he did. It makes no sense. You know, um, everything was fine. Why take to the life? Why take the lifeboat? You got more chances of surviving on the ship than the lifeboat, unless something unless something goes wrong with the ship, and nothing's going wrong with the ship. You know, so. Very unusual. So, yeah. anyone want to do or say anything? The only thing I can no, think of really. to do after this is to go check deck one and then check where he works as well for anything out of the ordinary. Mm hmm. You're doing that after dinner, after dinner, are you? Yeah. All right, hang on a sec. Well, he didn't really have a station on board the ship because, yeah, he was a safe handler and there's no safes on the ship at the moment. Whoops. So, but you can certainly check his cabin out and things like that if you wanted. Yeah, and deck one to see, check the airlock deck. Mm-hmm. I'm just making a few notes to myself so I don't have to make them later. Well, deck one. Deck one, deck one, deck one, deck one, deck one, deck one, deck one. Um basically, um 
area, there's a, a, obviously an airlock door at, at the top of, at the top of um, um, the ladder shaft uh, leading into M1. Um, the telltales say standard oxygen, standard pressure, standard 20 degrees temperature and one gravity. Um, M1 is basically just a large airlock area. Um, the airlock door leading to uh, the lifeboat uh, is reading, um, you know, close to minus 263 degrees centigrade. Yeah. Uh, zero oxygen, zero oxygen, one uh, G um, gravity <laughs> um, and uh, zero radiation. And what about our hang on, hang on, sorry. sensors? Uh, you what? Uh, what? You, well, you, you, you have the your toxic red gauge. Is that what you're talking about? No, for temperature. I don't trust oh, you, the temperature gauges. Well, it's it's about twenty degrees in here. Um, outside where M two was, it's open space, so it'd be pretty cold. <laughs> no, no, yeah. I'm just um, suspicious if is... anything starts getting cold. Yeah, no, nothing starts getting cold at this stage. I'm just trying to work out what the hell's that. Well, you got to use your words, Matt. Use your words. Yeah, I know. I'm just trying to work out what, what that is there. Off M1. I think that's... Ladder, maybe the ladder to the south side. No, or... no, to the west. The west, the door, <laughs> to yeah, the, the door, the east. No, the, well, that's over space. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to get what that is. Yeah, terminal 11, 11 L3. Yeah, I don't have an L3 on my get on my on my thing, that's why I can't work out what it is. Um, oh, yes, I do. I know what that is. That's the elevator up to the uh, snowball. Oh, that's what that is. That's why it's L three. It's L three elevator. It's under snowball's description, not under, yeah. not under the um, uh, the ship's description. That's why I didn't see it. And yes, that is a terminal in there. Um, um, again, the temperature and airlock and everything else in there seems fine, uh, according to the telltales. Are you going in? Uh, no. Although um, the elevator, uh, you're not going in. I won't tell you that thing. Bugger off. <laughs> well, I'm not going in the Dates. elevator. Um, so yes. So um, the, apart from that, did you, do you want? Did you want to check out one of the cabins or not? Yeah, I'll check out his cabin. Now, why is that marked? Um, where are we? Oh, that's why. <laughs> uh, um, so M19 is, um, um, is um, uh, where um, is um, characters characters's cabin? Um, it's relatively simple uh, in furnitures. Uh, it contains two beds, two chairs, a table, and two lockers. Um, there's a few personal personal items uh, that reflect the occupation and race and personality of um, the two people who shared this room. Um, that's uh, both, both, whoever they were in this room, they were both Yuzirians. The other safe handler, maybe? Uh, probably, it's, it's a fairly good bet. Um, I mean, I don't think we saw, well, I probably saw one or two other Yuzirians on the crew. Uh, yeah. Well, actually, it's kind of small crew, probably. Uh, yeah. 
Snape Handler and Astrogator. Mm -hmm. uh, Frosty. Yep, 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 yep. In all of this, oh. hmm? in all of this, have we run into Frosty yet? Oh, you've seen her about. She was up on the um. She she was um up on the um on the bridge deck at one stage with the captain, with when uh, Cerise was up there. Um. She's 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 floating around in the background with everyone, like you know, it's part of the crew. Yeah. Um, why do you ask? Oh, I was just wondering because I didn't think we've talked to her directly yet. Um, and I was just no. not sure of that, that. That information was right in my head. Yeah, no. Yeah, well, yeah, no. You haven't had a chance to talk to her yet. Well, you haven't said you wanted to talk to her per se. In in you might have implied it, but. Um, I, I don't recall you actually saying it at any stage. Um, um, at the moment, oh, by the way, at the moment, you guys are occupying, just for the record, um, uh, you guys uh, can have uh, cabins M22, Uh, M20. And M7, uh, and M17. So I don't know who's got in which of those cabins, but each, each of those cabins has two bunks in it. So M17, M22, and M20. Okay. 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 All right, yeah. So, um, unless there's something special you guys want to do, um, it's night time. Do you want to crash out to the next day or what? Where are we quartered? Well, there's two of you in M17. Two of you in M20 and two of you in M22. 17, 20, and 22. Yep. So I don't know who's in which cabin. It probably wouldn't hurt to write it down on a note, on a public note somewhere. What's that funny space in 2021? Uh, oh, that's ahead. Oh, okay. Well, they're private cabins, those. Eh? Well, you know, yeah. you, you, you know, you know what twenty is. It's a it's a private head. Um, so twenty, the door of twenty, the door of twenty actually says, um, uh, 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 Paul uh, Copter. And twenty one says Ellen Cooperman. Um, Seventeen says uh, Midge Armin. And also Archon uh, uh, Akrod Zon. Uh, Nineteen says uh, Cactus Waller and uh, and also Attila Meyer. And uh, twenty-two says uh, Tak Akbok. Now those names are vaguely familiar in your uh, original conversation. Some of those people obviously were on. Um, the Jetson platform, possibly, and or, and or the rescue mission. Um, but uh, Paul Copter was the original second in command, second officer, which is why his cabin's a little bit more flasher than anyone else's. Um, Kat, you and I don't know if anybody else can set um, uh, computer alarms if the temperature drops. On your personal, on your personal computer, your your uh, uh, mini comp, body comp. Yeah, the Atmos Cas. Mm -hmm. Should 
Sure, not a problem. Yeah, and I am assuming um, Doc and Escort are going to stay up until uh, Fiator wakes up. No, it wasn't Fiator, it was Dagor. Dagor. Um, I don't know. It could be. It, it could be several. It could be several hours or more. It's a pretty big dose you had to give him. Well, I don't think we want him to wake up alone. Well, that'll mean taking shifts then, if that's what you want to do. Well, does the captain want somebody there? Not particularly. She doesn't. She, she doesn't. She doesn't particularly want not want someone there either. She's indifferent well, to it. I, I don't think Doc's going to leave the patient until he wakes up. Yeah, I don't okay. think Doc would do that. The rest of us can take shifts to. Well, there's no reason why Doc couldn't sleep on one of the on one of the recovery on one of the unoccupied recovery couches. Yeah, but we're not leaving Doc alone. Well, you couldn't. It wouldn't. Okay, there's two unoccupied recovery couches, so you could both. Could, whoever stays with Doc could crash out there as well, if you wanted. Babs, do you want to stay with Doc? You want somebody else to? Uh, I can stay with him. He's going to have to. Might have to wrestle him back down eventually. Good thinking, Bat Boy. You might have to do what? You might have I to wrestle. wrestle not. Yeah, not the doc. Wrestle Dackle if he gets free is, is what um, yeah. Babs is saying, I believe. Is that right, Babs? Yep. Yep. Okay. Well, not much happens throughout throughout the um, not much happens throughout the uh, throughout the um, the night, the evening, the night. Um, um, Dackle does not wake up throughout, throughout the night. Um, and eventually you all end up um, having um, breakfast together. Again, the uh, three of the four remaining crewmen and yourselves. Um, the captain asks if there's any change in, in Dacor's condition. Has he woken up yet? And obviously you say, no, he hasn't, obviously. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, yeah. I thought there were five remaining crewmen. Uh, well, Who one of that? them just went out into space. Oh, that's right. I forgot about him. Callus Wallor is was in the um life pod life boat that should have life support for quite a long time shouldn't it a couple of days um generally generally uh, well 24 hours or so maybe a little bit longer depending on how many people are aboard um, price is pretty much enough to get to a nearby to get to a habited planet or to be picked up by a um, a nearby a nearby spaceship. It's certainly not um, it's not hyper capable. It's not jump capable, for example. And you wouldn't use one. You you could possibly get from Earth to the Moon if you could get out of the Earth's gravity well in one. Um, but you certainly couldn't. Yes, Jazz. Uh, but you certainly couldn't. You, you certainly wouldn't use it for in, in, interplanetary hopper as a as an inter, interplanetary hopperabout runabout. It's a lifeboat. It's not a. It's not a. It's not a ship as such. Right, right. Which again raises the question: Why did he do it? It makes no logical sense. Because there's no habitable planets nearby, and the ship was on its and the relief ship was on its way anyway. So yeah. You know, it doesn't make sense. I'll see if the captain can log me on. See if the captain can troubleshoot why I can't log on. Maybe Cat can help. Yeah, maybe Cat too. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. Yeah, we'll, we'll certainly certainly something we'll we'll need to uh, need to cover off. Mm -hmm. uh, need to get sorted out. Says uh, says Ellen. Um. When we finish up breakfast, I'll go up to the bridge, and you you go you go down to the um, to the engineering deck, 
and uh, we'll see how we, we'll see how we get we'll, and we'll stay in communication and work out how how what's going on with it all. She says. Okay. Um, so while that's what's everybody else going to be doing while that happens. Asks if there's any maintenance she can help with. No, just just basically keeping an eye on things around the ship. Um, basically, sorry, Jess, I didn't see that. <laughs> That's just a side comment. Yeah, fair enough. So yes. Because they're um, warm and fuzzy. <laughs> um, as far as uh, Jasper asks, and sorry if this was covered earlier, but are there any weapons aboard the ship? Like uh, firearms, uh, weapons, or anything? Oh, there's a few. I mean, there's the laser pistol the captain shot himself with. Right. Um, there's your weapons and a few other bits and pieces. But it's not, a, it's not a warship, so there's no armory, if that's what you're asking. Yeah, I'm just wondering if, if uh, aside from us and aside from the laser pistol that we've secured, uh, if the rest of the crew uh, of the uh, Money Spider have their own weapons. Oh, well, it'd be unusual if they didn't, but they're, 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 certainly not, they're certainly not wearing them or they certainly don't have them with them as such. Um, okay. But I mean, it's pretty much, well, it's not the Wild West, but everybody's got accent. You know, it's certainly a lot a lot looser firearm wise um, the around frontier. the place. It's the frontier, exactly. Okay, so there, so it, it's likely that they've got weapons perhaps in their cabins or wherever, but they're not actually yeah. carrying them around as a normal thing. That's correct. Okay. So yeah, um, so yeah. So, um, so Kat and let me, if I get this, if I've got this right, Cat and Voke are heading down to deck three, uh, deck, the engineering deck, deck three, yeah, or heading to the engineering deck, deck three, yeah, yeah. is that right? Mm -hmm. um, the captain um, is heading to deck one. Um, the other two crew members, um, um, Fator and uh, Baralu, are going about their regular duties. What is Babu and Doc and Jazz and Cerise doing? Well, Doc wants to check on Dagor. Okay. Make sure his life signs are good, see if he's awake. Mm -hmm. um, what about, okay, that's that's Doc. What about, um, what about Jazz? Going to back him up and if he does end up being awake and slightly... Uh, Less uh, violent. Mm -hmm. um, I might try to talk to him again. Mm -hmm. All right. If he, that's if he's awake. Yeah. What about you, Cerise? And you, Cerise Jess? wants to go to Snowball. Does anybody, anybody on the crew go down there? Or up there to along? Yeah. Um, yeah. If she could if she could if there, if anyone goes there. Yeah. Um. Well, sticking to the buddy system, Jazz will go with Cerise if. Series does go down the snowball. Well, nobody's uh, um, nobody's uh, indicating nobody with an earshot is indicating that they're going there. Um, so, oh, that's what it is. Um, so, yeah, um, there's nothing stopping you from going yourself. By the way, we probably yeah, so we'll, have we'll to go ask down. permission from the captain. I assume. Ah, oh, you can certainly are. Yeah. Yeah, if you need to go check out snowballs, no problem. No my problem from my end, she says. Jazz will also ask, before we do, Jazz will also ask, um, considering that it seems like, you know, people are a bit on edge, um, we're waiting for the release to come in. Um, we're still, I assume we're still doing like the 30 minute uh, comms check. Jazz will suggest to the captain, completely up to her, but would suggest that her and her crew do the same. It might have helped catch uh cast this before he kind of just completely disappeared or maybe it wouldn't have mattered but yeah it's not a bad idea she says maybe she babs just... can go talk to people or well, babs was backing up the doc wasn't he 
Yeah, but they could up the dock. But... They could hang out together. Yeah. Well, um, so um, you're splitting up on me again, but that's okay. Um, you, uh, Babu and, and Doc, um, the life signs, Dako's life signs are pretty good. Um, he's still asleep. Um, uh, hasn't woken up yet. So, but everything else seems a okay with him uh, in that regard. Um, the, uh, um, you, you, uh, Jazz and, sorry, Cat and Voke uh, are a city. Well, one is, who's, who's on the terminal? And it doesn't matter, but which one of you is on the terminal? Uh, may as well be Cat. All right. All right. Well, I fixed that again, Voke. Try give that a go. It says the captain's voice coming over the intercom. Cat will try. Um, Insufficient access. Cat will try. <laughs> okay. Um, cat, where is the computer? Where's my computer map? There it is. My other computer map. Okay, so um, level four. <laughs> Okay, you get yourself into the uh, the um, MN the uh, MMN computer. Um, uh, get past the uh, lockout security. Mm -hmm. What do you want to do? Uh, I'll list programs. Oh, yeah, okay, list the thing. Um, it's a level four. Yeah, it's a level four computer. Um, it's uh, located. Um, Um, uh, on deck five in the strong room, it reports. Um, oh, really? Yeah, that's, yeah. Where it's, that's where it's that's where it's like that's where its physical location is. Oh, we logged in there. Oh, hang on, you're on ten, aren't you? Sorry, I'm the wrong. I'm on the wrong computer. <laughs> that's My still thought. its physical location. No, that is no, that's that that is that's right. Yeah, yeah, I, I thought we're, for some reason, I thought we were at five logging into MMT. No, you're at 10. Yeah, gotcha. Because you're lo logging on to MMN. Because um, you, you, you said deck three, the engineering deck, remember? Or I said deck three, the engineering deck, yeah, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, so, yeah, the main computer, where was I? I lost it again now. Oh, I hate that. Yeah, um, it's got a computer lockout four. That's the MMNCL computer lockout four. Uh, yep. The MMN the MMNDR uh, drive four. Um, the MMNAS astrogation four. Yep. Uh, the MMNCS computer security two. Computer security two. Yep. Uh, the MMNCN. Uh, communication one. Comms one. The MMN LG languages one. Uh huh. Uh, the MMN AL alarm three. Alarm three. The MMN BE bureaucracy two. I was waiting for that. <laughs> oh yeah, you, it was it was certainly coming up. It had to have been with this many software on the system. Yeah. Uh, the the MMNIS installation security three. Uh, installation sec three. Yep. The the MMNRM robot management four. Robot four. And the MMNLS Life Support 1. Life Support 1. Okay. All right. Um, that's just from the computer itself. Uh, Cat, the Ellen's voice comes back on. So are you in, she says? Uh, yes. <laughs> the way you said that then is so suspicious. Okay. All good then? Yep. Seems all good. Excellent. All right. I'll leave you to it. Any, anything, any, if you need to, you know how to get me, she says. Yep. So, yeah. Um, so now uh, that you're in there, now that you're into the MN, what do you want to do? Do I find the link from MN to the 
general computer that I saw from the captain's terminal? Uh, you'd have to you'd have to look at each individual program to to, to determine that. Why not then? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, yeah, seven, yeah. eight, nine rolls. <laughs> okay, just do it one one at a time, please. Uh, and you want to? What do you want? Which roll do you want? Uh, uh, well, um, repair. No, um, it's, it's not really repair, is it? It's, or a manipulate um, prog. That's what we were um, using for debugging last time. Actually, it's probably closer to to an interface computer. Um, going through the notes uh, since last time. So which program was that you're checking out? Uh, I'll go in order that you read them out. So um, the first one was the LK4. The LK? Yeah. You sure, you sure, you sure, you sure I didn't say CL? Sorry, yeah, I wrote it down. Computer yeah, right. lockout, yeah. Yeah, computer lockout, seal. Um, it looks like it's a standard a standard computer lockout uh, program. Um, it's password protected. You do not have the password for it. Um, but it, it, it uh, look tracing through the tracing through the scripts files, things like that. It looks like the computer lockout program um, can lock out uh, the, uh, the MN, uh, the DR drive, the astrogation, uh, the communication, the alarm, the bureaucracy, the installation security, and the life support software on this computer. Yeah. So if you stuff up any of these any of these roles, the computer lockout program is going to come down hard. Yeah. On each. So uh, so that that's a that's a a, a booby trap or tripwire if you like, um, yeah. as opposed to a booby trap um, on those ones. So yeah. Cool. Uh, may as well just do them in order. I'll go to the drive program next. Sure. Okay. Yeah, it's got it. it, it obviously back to the computer, the computer lockout program. It also um, ties into the uh, astrogation program. Yep. And the computer security program as well. Yep. Oh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. I lied. Just the astrogation program. Okay. Okay. Uh, now the astrogation program. Sure. Um, it ties into the computer security. Yep. Uh, and it also seems to have um, a link uh, heading um, across the net to the MGL computer. And it's a one way. It's a one way link. It's an out outgoing link. It's, it looks like the firewall won't let any inc any any incoming communications along that link. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now I do that. Looks uh, for what kind of is it? Another is it a manipulate progs role to figure out whether that's could have been used to write the suicide note. The astrogation. Yeah, because you you said that that link exists, and that link exists yeah. to the place that I was expecting. Well, the well the astrogation probe. I mean, you couldn't. You know, I mean, if you got fancy, you could probably use the astrogation pro the astrogation program to plot astrogation points across the across the frontier, which would spell out the note, but you wouldn't use it to write the note, I don't think. So, um, okay, so this is more this is more a a computer program sort of connection rather than the terminal than I saw. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. This it, it, it's probably it's probably uh, um um an information dump. Yeah, okay. to the information storage. Because the thing that I'm suspicious of here is somebody actually writing the suicide note rather than or someone captain. would have had to have written oh rather than the captain yeah fair enough yeah um well yeah because I mean, we, we, we we saw that connection into that computer from the mn the main computer 
Yeah, well, that's it's as I said, it, it's this this link appears to be mainly a um uh, an information and uh, yeah a one-way information dump out. But right. again, you wouldn't use the I mean you wouldn't use an aggregation program to do that. No, but I haven't found any links here that would be that. I guess they could be closed off. They could um, be closed off. Yeah. They could it could have been written it could have been written on the MGL itself. Hmm. You know, um, so yeah. Yep. Anyhow, still going through and like looking for matrix related bugs. And um, well, that's the, well, hang on, that's hang on, you, you, you're doing, you look, that's a different role. Um, sorry. Okay, well, we're doing all of them. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, it's just, it's just. Sorry, I thought you were concentrating on tracing links at this stage. That's okay. That was misunderstanding on my part. Yeah. Um, so the link, the link tracing interface computers, um, and the, it's the um, uh, the uh, what, what I can't remember what we used last time. Yeah, you said it earlier. Um, manipulate program. Manipulate programs. That was the one uh, to actually go through and look for look for bug, look for a matrix bug. Okay. So, so far you've done the first four programs as far as linking is concerned. Yeah. Uh, first three programs as far as linking is concerned. Do you want to do those three roles for? Yeah, I may as well. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, nothing in the uh, computer lockout. Which is weird, but probably is computer security that is doing uh, the weird stuff. Nothing in the, nothing in the, uh, the drive program, which is probably a good thing because you don't want the drives blowing up. Uh, and nothing in the aggregation. Okay, I may as yeah, well just, do the. Just, just, right. just, just hold on there, please. Um, I need to flip the other guys. Um, so, because um, that takes a while to do, obviously all that. Um, so, uh, Cerise and Jazz, you make your way up to deck one. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, when you get there, um, the lift uh, appears to be um, at the. Uh, uh, um, up at Snowball, or down at Snowball, depending on how you want to talk about okay, it. Is there a call that... button? Yeah, there's a call button, yeah. But does that also mean that someone's already over there on Snowball? Yes, that would be a logical assumption. Okay. So press the call button. All right. Um, now the call it takes a while for the lift to come down. Obviously, you, I, I, I can't remember the exact the exact number of minutes, but something like 20, 10 minutes or so, or twenty minutes or so from the last from the last time you, the last couple of times you wrote it, or the last time, the last three times you wrote it. Um, the lift's about halfway down, roughly. It's about ten minutes into it, roughly, when um, the communication system. Um, and everybody hears this, and this is why I stopped you, Kat. Um, um, uh, Baralu's voice um, comes over the intercom system, um, uh, calling, uh, calling, uh, calling for help. Um, I'm up on Snowball, and I need some. I need some help, please. Um, she's a little bit. Well, for her, she's very excited, but for everybody, for, but for everybody else, it comes across as uh, a mild interest because <laughs> that's how cold she is, you know. Um, um, quick, please hurry. Um, what's everybody doing? Now, I know you two, I know Jazz and Cerise are at the lift. What's everybody else doing? Uh, I, I'll go with, I'll... Make your way, you're going to make your way to the one? Dark. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well. You, you're going as well, Kat? Yeah. Yeah. Well. I, are you I, staying? Are you staying hacked in? Um. Mm. <laughs> uh. Mm, I don't really have enough time to make myself a login. Uh. Okay, no, I'll, I'll log out. Okay, you're logging out. That's all right. I'll get to you in a minute, Jazz. Um, uh, what about you, Babu and Doc? Are you heading there as well? Babu looks at Doc to see what he's going to do. Well, as I said, um, 
Dakor looks um, Dakor looks stable um, and and doesn't look like he's going to wake up anytime soon. Um, if um, if Buck if hang on. Yeah, I am. Yes. Sorry, what was that? What was that, Doc? You're saying? Um, just that um, Doc was going to ask on the comms if Bell Lou needs medical assistance. Yeah, yeah, I think we're going to need some. You better hurry, please. She says, and then cuts off all cut the the, the signal. The communication cuts off, or the intercom cuts out. Cuts off. Um, like you know, you push the button real quick and then go type thing. Um. So yeah, so are you heading up, heading that way as well? Yeah, yeah, good. Thank you. I really don't like it when you guys split up. It's hard. To, it's hard to run everyone. Um, all of you. It's quite big in that regard. So, um, does that mean Babu and Doc are going up to deck one for the lift as well? Yes, I think so. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The captain's voice comes across. You know, have you got? Have you? Have you guys got this? We need to. Someone needs to main, stay here to maintain the ship. Yeah, we'll go investigate. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, about that fee, though. Never mind. <laughs> um, Fatal, stay at your post. I need you. I need you here. Roger that, Captain. Says the uh, says the drill site. Uh, the lift arrives not long after everybody else does. Um, I'm assuming you're piled into the lift. Yep. Yeah. Um, the uh, the lift um, the temperature is only about uh, 15 degrees in the lift, not the uh, 20 the rest of the ship is. The oxygen and the radio and the um, pressure are all standard. So the lift the lift basically in effect uh, um, accelerates away from the ship towards Snowball. Um, at about the halfway mark, the acceleration um, vectors change and you start slowing down again um, as you get closer to Snowball. Um, the gravity goes from 1G um, uh, down to about 0.2G um, as you travel the lift shaft towards Snowball. Again, you've experienced all this before at least three times. Once when you arrived, once when you left, once when you arrived back. Yeah, okay. Yep. Um, yep. I need to change maps. Where's my map? Where's my other map? There's my other map. Okay. Um, so you're very close to Snowball. Hang on, sorry. Um, hang on, what am I doing? Oh, yeah, one there, you see, okay. Um, when there is, uh, actually, you make it on, you, you make it on Snowball. Um, and, um, apparently, um, although I actually didn't explicitly mention it, um, Barlow apparently was checking on the, um, the micro still. Um, um, on Snowball. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. okay. so, um, the, the lift arrives, uh, the doors open, um, and there's a pretty large explosion from the micro still area. I need everyone to make me a reaction speed check, please. So close. Right. Oh, if no, you miss... What, what happened to Cat? Yeah, Babu steps in front of Doc. Yeah. Give me one second for series. God, God, you guys are failing that. Hey, why are you failing? Everybody, everybody, everybody but Doc um, gets uh, falls to the ground from the force of the explosion. Um, none of you hurt yourselves. You don't take any damage, luckily. Um, so, yeah. Uh, what do you guys want to do? 
Which reminds me, are we fully healed, or did we heal any overnight? Yeah, you should be. You should have been. You should have been fully healed by the time you got back to the ship. Okay, I was down two. For some. Oh, now you should be. Now you should be fully healed by now. Um. So yeah. Um. What do you guys? Um. What do you guys want to do? Pick yourselves up off the floor, obviously. Um, do we have like, um, like environmental suits? Like, if there's any kind of breach, are we? Uh... <laughs> well, do we have funny, any kind of gear? funny, funny. You should mention that. Um, no, there you, you do not detect the rush of atmosphere. So, um, looks like the explosion did not pierce the hull. Luckily. Um, well, if it did, I mean, there's no airlock between where you are and the micro still, so, eh. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right. So, um, Jasmine will report up to Ellen, and at least on comms to the rest of the crew, uh, that there's been an explosion, um, and we'll, we'll kind of report more. Baraloo, Baraloo, come in Baraloo. Baraloo, come in Baraloo. There's no answer on the comms. Um, I guess we'll just head in the direction of the still. Yeah, okay. Um, cautiously, the, the door to the still is not down, but it's obviously the door helped contain the explosion, whatever it was. Um, you're probably going to have to, um, well, certainly you probably have to cut your way in if you want to get inside, um, because it's not going to open by itself, it's too, it's too badly warped for that. Uh, is it uh, metal? Sorry, is it what? Uh, metal. It's, a, it's yeah. some sort of some sort of alloy. Yeah, you can cut through it with a with a laser with a um, a welder, a laser torch or something like that. Thinking to just put a hand on it and see if it feels hot. Um, like there's a fire on the other side, maybe. Yeah, no, um, it's warm-ish, um, but it's not hot enough that there's a fire on the other side. Um, but good thinking. Actually, very good thinking. Um, but yeah, um, so you guys should have the necessary tools in, in your in your tech kits to, to cut your way in if that's what you want to do. And don't forget, you're in about 0.2 gravity here too, so you're more floating than walking. Mm. So does this well, jet, where, where are we on the map? Um, are we in this can you see all three? three? L, yeah, can you see all three L1? You're in, you're in that, you're in that, um, um, uh, it's a, well, L1's a, it's a yeah, your L3, so the, L3's the thing, um, the airlock, uh, where are we? So we got yes, to cut it's, our way sorry, through the airlock to get out. Yeah, well, yeah, that one anyway. Yes. Well, maybe not oh. cut your way out. You might be able to repair. You might be able to repair it enough to to get it out if you want to do a, a repair roll or yeah, try a repair roll. Yeah, I definitely want to repair it rather than okay. cut away. Well, in that case, you better give me a repair roll, please. Out of, uh, That's Jasmine, I can Jazz, see he's he's going to pull out his weapon just in case. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, I click on his LP screen while he's at it. Okay. So yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. One's a side view, the other one's a, a vertical view. That's what's throwing me. That's what's throwing me out. That's what's throwing me out. Um, yeah. Okay. So um, did you make that repair? Oh yes. It, so you managed to repair the, the airlock door enough for it to work. Okay. Um, the telltales they were out. All right. The power is out. No, the telltales, the oxygen radiation pressure telltales on the door are out, are not working. So the indicators are not showing anything. Yes, they're not showing anything at all. They're out completely.
We so, don't have any way of knowing what's on the other side, then, do we? Nope. All right, Babs and Jazz, get ready to close the airlock door. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right, so you got to crack the airlock? Yep. All right. Well, there's the the odor of um, the odor of uh, burning electrical burning electrical wiring. You know that that acid wire metal burn smell. You know the one. Insulation burning oh, yeah. things like that. Um, and there's yep. a, there's a, a slight haze in the air. And so a I'm slight haze. In tell the air. tell um, cat to check her atmos cast and. We'll go in. All right. Uh, are you checking your Atmos Kaz, your Atmos Kaz cat? Sure. Uh, and then um, it should be an analyzed role, wouldn't it? Um, where are we? No, it's automatic. It's, oh, okay. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Thank you. Um, the uh, the atmosphere is breathable. Uh, the temperatures, um, as as you watch, the temperature goes from. Um, um uh 20 degrees to to 19.9 degrees uh so temperature is fluctuating at this stage um and um the oxygen is at 20 is at 20.8 percent well what is that compared to normal 21 percent is normal oxygen levels Um, there's a little bit of background radiation, but no more than you'd expect. Oh, you, uh, if you're checking your, your, uh, toxic red gauges, which I'm assuming you are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so moving, um, moving north and then west along the corridor into area L1, is that what you're doing? Yep. Yep. Um, there has been an explosion in L1. Uh, the, the room, um, including the remains of the life support system and the MCR computer, are completely wrecked. I identifiable, but wrecked. Okay. Um, there's also a very badly mutilated Yazirian body um, and um, a quick a quick spot search check, guys, please. Yeah, uh, the name tag on the on the uniform it's it's partly burnt off and partly destroyed, but it it does um, it does uh, read. Um, sorry, what have I done with it now? I hate that. I want to I want to get this right. I don't want to get this wrong. Uh, Um, you can make out um, uh, the first uh, at the start of the name is um, the letters B A, um, and at the end is uh, Chan C H A N, and is a scorched patch in the middle. Uh, we immediately tell tell the captain what we what we see. Explosion. Um... Dead Yazirian body remains. Doc, Doc will go to check them out. The remains. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, give me a diagnostic a diagnostic role, please, mate. Um, the body's pretty mutilated. Um. It's actually unidentifiable. You only detect it as a Yazirian because it's got a Yazirian style head as opposed to a human head or a Vrusk head, uh, and it's got a head which makes it not a which makes it not a Dralocyte. So it's got to be a Yazirian. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Um, but other than that, there's no. I mean, it's so badly mutilated, scorched, and whatever. Um, you're actually surprised you managed to get any any name tag off the uniform at all. Actually. Um, so it's pretty obvious. It's pretty obvious whoever died, whoever it is, died in the explosion. Well, there's not a lot of choices. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, true. <laughs> um, just take a look around. Try to 
figure out what caused the explosion or what the source of the explosion was? Um, sure, you can, have, you can attempt to do that. You have a search, give me a search roll. I'll put some penalties on it because it's not your area of expertise. Uh, with demolitions help. Um, actually, demolitions would help, so I'll, I'll take the penalties off. Okay. Um, would you like a search roll? Like yeah, search roll. No, no, search roll. No, no, search roll, please. It's just the, the the fact that you've got the demolitions. Well, yeah, you actually you actually managed you actually managed to work out um, the the center of the explosion looked like the life support system. Huh. And with the amount of um, heat fusing um, around around that site, the suspicion, and it's only a suspicion, the suspicion is the life support system overheated and exploded from the from the, that was yeah that result. Life support system does what does that actually mean? Does that mean it's like a um, oxygen generating machine or oxygen um, heat cooling you name it it handles everything okay without it without it the place would be um you know vacuum space space vacuum, yeah no oxygen things like that uh cash so can, can i get us well hang on just if we do cash can i get a spot check please and then you can and once she makes that roll you can you can say what you're going to say please um jazz Jazz, go ahead. You're saying something? Oh, uh, I was going to say, now that that life support is down, we can expect Snowball to be uh, kind of, we can expect air and, and heat to kind of go away over time, right? Which is, which Kat speaks up and goes, it's already started happening. <laughs> Great. Uh, that's according to the Atmos case you've got, Kaz, Kat. Can yeah. you give me a, um, can you, can, I, now, I, now I do need a, a um, um, a logic, uh, a logic roll off you, which is as an analysis. Um, you reckon you've got about ten minutes, maybe down to about eight already before um, the oxygen level is going to become toxic. Um, and yeah, and then the temperature will go down, going down slowly, but it'll it'll also go down. So you've got about eight eight minutes or so, eight to ten minutes or so. To either to, to to do something about the um about breathing. Yeah, probably want to go. We can't fix this machine. It's obviously Fubar. Oh no, it's way past repair repair status. Yeah. Um, we try to drag the body with us. Can uh, you, do you that? can certainly yeah, you pick the body up. Sure. I think Babu will do that then. She's mm -hmm. probably the strongest. Yeah. Sure. Um, if Jazz has a few minutes, I mean, he's going to try and take a, a, oh, wait, no, we already said that looks like a student overheating. So Jazz wouldn't know any more than that. No. Um, does Kat have a minute to check the computers to see if the computers caused it to overheat? And the other thing Ceres wants to know is if there's any survival gear uh, pressure suits, radiation suits, anything like that that we can scavenge here. Sorry, no, most of it's been, whatever's, whatever's here has been destroyed or damaged beyond repair, including the computer terminal. Yeah, I, I, and I the computer the and the computer yeah. itself. By that kind of explosion, cat kind of, re yeah, there's nothing yeah, to yeah. log into or figure out. No, exactly right. So what do you want to do, guys? Uh, I think we should go back. I don't, yeah, body I don't think out. I can fix it. So. No, no one can. It's 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 beyond repair. Maybe do a quick search of the entire place and go. If we haven't yep, already done right, well, that. Well, give me a quick search then if you want. Yeah, I don't think we have time to go to the shuttle dock or the starship dock. No, no. Um, no, you don't. There's nothing of interest apart from what I've already told, uh, already told you. A lot of debris, you know, a lot of damage, um, things like that. But um, do we? 
do we have any suspicions that this explosion might have damaged the elevator? Where, where is this in relation to the elevator? Um, well, there's a pretty decent set of um, um, walls and that between the elevator. I mean, it's it's it. The short answer is no, as far as you're aware. Okay, right? cool. And you're basing that on the fact that the explosion didn't breach the outer walls. Right, and if you look at the if you look at the plan, not the plan view, but the side on view, those walls uh, uh, surround the L the the L three area, which is the um, the um, lift, as yeah. well as, as yeah. So no, the chances if it didn't breach the walls, it's probably not. It probably wouldn't have hurt the the elevator at all. Okay, good. I'd just be nervous at well <laughs> nervous at the money spider drifting off into oblivion. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, no, no, the cable, well, the cable's still attached, so no, yeah. you'll be fine. Cool, cool. All right, yeah, I guess to the elevator. All right. So you, you get yourselves into the elevator with the body? Mm hmm Yep. Yep, yep. Um, and set off for the money spider. Play appropriate I... elevator music. Yeah, do, 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 do. Can I get... Uh, wait, um... In the meantime, reporting back to Ellen... Uh, what happened? Life support blown up, coming back with the body, uninhabitable, un uninhabitable, et cetera. Yep. Okay. Acknowledged. <sighs> she's out, she's upset. You can hear it. In, you can hear it in, in the undertone of her voice. Um, would um, you guys all give me a? An, it's definitely an intuition check. Please. That first and one so, was actually Cerise. That first one was Cerise, was it? Right. Um, Voke, Doc, and Cat, would you all go over to private room one? I'll come over in a second. Okay. I think you that's Babu, not Cat. Hey? I, th I, I failed think... mine, right? You want the negative ones. Right? No, I know what I'm doing. Can I get Vogue, okay. Cat, and Doc all over to private room one? I'll be User over in a second, please. Channel. channel switched. User joined your channel. User joined your channel. User joined your channel. Dan, can you come back over, please? User left your channel. Sure. User left your channel. User joined your channel. Come back over, you two, please. User left your channel. Channel switched. User joined your channel. Okay, so. <laughs> Jess, Jess, <laughs> in a bit of a panic. Sorry. Yeah, Jess, sorry, Jess, Jess, a bit of a panic. Sorry, so we're not slowing down. We're not, we should be slowing down by now. Cat looks around. Does she see a computer terminal? No. <laughs> no. She spends a minute plugging in her inertial screen. <laughs> a minute plugging. A minute. You said a minute plugging in your inertial screen. Oh, I just um, thought it took a little bit. Cerise, uh, Cerise um, it's true. The elevator should have started slowing down by now, and it's not. It's still, it's still going on. Um, you reckon you've got about two minutes before it crashes into the money spider. What do you guys want okay, to do? So, um, inertial screens, brace for impact. Is there anything here that, any way that we can slow it down? Well, you could try and operate machinery roll as a technician. Yeah. To we'll try and slow it down. Do that. 
and vote. Get, help me. Uh, All right, Vake, you better do the, you better do the first roll then, Vake, because Vake, you want to give another roll? Right? Yeah, yeah, I know. Give me a quick. And anyone else got technician skill? They want to help. Wants to help out? I don't think so. I'll think anyone no. else has. Okay. Check, 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 check. Let me do the quick maths in my head. Um, right. What level technician are you, Cerise? Five. Right. Give me a second. I need to roll some dice. Okay, so you feverishly work. The both of you feverishly work um, for a good minute, a, a good minute, or a minute half or so. Uh, while they're working, what's everybody else doing? What's I try to and brace Bedouin? myself in the best way I can for when this thing stops suddenly. <laughs> Cat, we have a... Jazz. What are you doing, guys? Call the uh, money spider and tell them, and then brace for impact. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lay flat right. on the floor or ceiling or whatever. Right. Okay. Um, you may you do manage to slow the, the, the elevator somewhat, um, it, not down to its normal speed. Um, it does slam into the money spider uh, quite hard uh, to the point where each of you um, takes um, each of you takes uh, two d10 damage. You can roll that yourselves. Uh, inertia screen, skin suits, and as per normal, apply. So everybody, who hasn't rolled? Jazz, you haven't rolled yet. User in your channel timed out. Who did we lose? Jazz. Okay. I'll give him a second to reconnect. Um, so yeah, so if you're wearing skin suits, have it. If you're wearing inertia screens, have it. If you're if you're wearing uh, both, uh, have it and then have it again. Rounding down each time, if required. And that's how much damage you take from the impact of the lift into the um, thing, into the money spider. The interesting part about it is that the um, the lift lift itself you were slowed enough that there's now not really that much damage to the to the physical lift itself um but obviously you guys got bounced around a bit when it uh, when it did when it did come down um what do you want to do turn the temperature up to so, 35. yeah so Rizal's tell say to cat get the temperature up babu convince the captain to let us take the temperature to 35. The only way to get that temperature up would actually have, be having access to the life support system. And we haven't found a terminal that can access that yet. Uh, so we'd probably have to be breaking into that strong room to do so. Or getting access. But I don't think the captain believes us. We'll see if she does now. Well, we'll force her to. At gunpoint if we have to. What mutiny? I could try. Yeah, we're not her crew. Yes, you are. You sign contracts to it. Yeah, it's mutiny. It's survival. I got no problem with it. <sighs> can't trust the can't trust the murder hobos. <laughs> All 
All right, so uh, so uh, you open up the elevator doors, I'm assuming? Yes. Okay. Uh, um, the uh, uh, what do you uh, what do you what are you doing after that? Where are you well, headed? What are you doing? Right. Well, I say as you as um as you uh, as you uh, make your way into M one, uh, Ellen uh, comes out of the uh, the ladder shaft from deck two. Oh, thank God, you're all right. You, I assume everyone's all right. Bumps and bruises. Yeah, yeah, that's not good. Mary Lou isn't. Oh God. Oh God, that's. Uh... That boom okay. Up. <laughs> what do we, we? Was it an accident? Was it? You know, what's going on? Go what are you saying, Babu? Temperature in here. Oh, not that stupid story about this bug again, is it? Yeah, yeah. It's really important that we do this. All right. I'll tell you what. I'll do it simply to prove it doesn't work. It, it, it's not, I'll do it for three hours, all right, just to prove it doesn't bloody do anything. And she heads down to the uh, – she and she and – she, Bring yeah, that, bring, bring, the, bring the body, bring the body, <laughs> bring the body, will you? Bring the body and put her and, and put it into, um, uh, it. into the sick, sick bay area, please. She says, she's upset at you guys for spreading stupid stories and also the loss of a crew member or the loss of another crew member. Uh, where's my map? Where's my computer map? There it is. So uh, she heads back down to the. Um, uh, she heads down to. Uh, um, back down to the bridge. Uh, plops herself into uh, the chair in front of Terminal Two and starts to manipulate the um, man manipulate the uh, computer. Um, and over the next quarter of an hour or so, the temperature goes up to about thirty-five. Happy now, she says. So, Babu, you went to the sick bay with the body. Did anyone go with you? Doc. Okay. I mean, uh, Cerise will gen genuinely ask her, do you have another explanation for all of the things going on? Yeah, I do. I think we've got a murderer aboard. And she's looking rather suspiciously at you lot. Um, Doc, can I get a, a – when you get to sick bay, are you doing anything in particular? Apart from putting the body into a, into a, into a um, storage, cold storage? What, the am I putting the the remains in cold storage? Yeah. Yeah. Now, so you doing anything anything apart from that? Uh, checking on Dagor. Okay. Um, his uh, uh, life uh, life monitor is not connected. It's turned off. Okay. Turn it on. Is he dead? Oh yeah. R.I.P. How Why did didn't he die? Um, unknown at this stage. There's no obvious bullet wounds or gunshot wounds or strangulation marks or bruises or anything else apart from what was already on him in the first place. So I, I'm um, assuming Doc doesn't feel there's any possibility to resuscitate? Not without a diagnostic role to start with.
No, the, um, the, not rigor mortis hasn't quite set in yet, but um, certainly the blood is all drained to the lower extremities. Um, so no, you don't think there's any um, any uh, any reason to try to resuscitate. So I mean, that's dead for half an hour or an hour or something like that. Yeah, so, about that. So about how long we were gone? Um, yeah, a little bit. Not quite as long as you were gone, but that would be an estimation at this stage. Again, a full autopsy would give you the would give you more right, information. Right. That's going to that's going to take you several hours, though. They, they all do. Um, meanwhile, um, um, uh, Theator and uh, Ellen are both on the bridge with Cat and Voke and Cerise and Jazz, I believe. Whereas Doc and Babu are down in sick bay. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, I so. think so. Yeah. Okay. Um, are you going to... Oh, shit, I shouldn't do that. Um, are you going to report in? Um... Yeah. Um, the doc will go to the shipwide comm so everybody hears and says, uh, Dagor's died about 45 minutes ago. Cause unknown. What? Says Ellen. Ay, 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 ay. Okay, um, young um, young Fiator is really scared. Uh, my God, we're going to be next. We're going to be next. We're going to die here. We're going to die. That's terrible. I don't want to die. I'm too young to die. <clears throat> yes, anyway. Was that a pathology rule to calm him down? Well, you could do it, but you're doing it over the uh, intercom. It's not, not, probably not the best way to do it. Oh, no. So the I only ones left are intercom. Ellen and Fiator, right? Yeah, apparently. And you guys. The eight of you. There's only, there's only eight of you left. Don't have to share rooms anymore. School. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> no, well, you are a bloody murder hobo, aren't you? <sighs> there, oh, dear me. Looks like Jazz lost uh, connection. Yeah, it looks like he's gone. Lost he's lost his down. He's been out for a while. Oh, he'll, he'll, yeah, he'll he'll come an back and his, home, his uh, home broadband is down. Yeah, that's right. I'll fill him in when he when the um uh, on the YouTube video anyway. He'll, he'll he'll catch up unless he gets back onto us. Um, although he's only got he's only got about half an hour before we wrap up. Anyway, um, so um, so what's everybody doing? Because six of you are on the bridge. Two of you are in sick bay, and Babu, who is in sick bay, wants to try and treat psychosocial somebody up in the bridge. Are you going up to the bridge? Not if the dog nope. isn't ready to go up there. And no, I'm ready. Let's go. You're not going to do an autopsy, Doc? That was my next question. Well, you're not no, going to do an autopsy no, straight away? Fine. Right, that's fine. So you're all up on the bridge. All, all eventually up on the bridge. You want to try your psychosocialism, please? Yep. Um, that would be great. Uh, yeah, you managed to calm him down um, and, and you know, bring him back online. Um, does anyone remember? Uh, it's, it's related. It's related, but it's a quick, quick sidebar. Does anyone remember the movie Alien? Z, the plural, where the colonial yeah. marines. Oh, game over, man. It's all game over. Yeah. Pull it together. Yeah, we'll pull it together. Yeah, that type of situation. Um, yeah. Um, who, he's the only, he, that act is the only guy to be, be killed by every, every alien species, movie species we've know, we know of, <laughs> including the Terminator. Um, um, I'm, 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 I'm looking for something. What am I looking for? That's what I'm looking for. Okay. Um, it, you, you're all starting to, it's starting to get a little bit warm in here as the temperature, yeah, you know, at 35 degrees type thing. Um, where is the damn? Oh, there it is. This one after. Yeah, so you're all up on the bridge. 
Okay. Um, and the captain's a little bit, a little bit, you know. Mm. Um, yeah. Um, well, that guy died while we were off, right? How long? Did, how long was our trip? About an hour. About an hour all up including all the all the elevated riding so i mean the doc's pretty convinced that he died sometime in the we last were, while, we're while you're away yes yeah that's that's the doc's opinion those two aren't going to believe us but but well the the was the machine unplugged the well he wasn't on a life support machine he was on a life support monitor and yeah. it was turned off and that turned off could have yeah, been sure. from software. No, the... It could have been done via software, or it could have been done manually. I mean, it's not it's not a it's not a toggle switch. It's just one of those push. It's one of those soft push buttons you see on the on the modern medical equipment. You've seen that type of stuff. Because it would be very different from what we'd be expecting, like the Matrix killing people off, if there was an actual physical interaction. Well, it could have been it could have been either way. It's something else. Something other than the monitor had to kill him. That's right. Something other than the monitor had to kill him. Mm. So it's, it wasn't a matter of turning off turning off the life assist program, and therefore he died of natural causes. It was it, the monitoring, the which the monitoring was turned off or disconnected. Yeah, and something else killed him. Is what Doc is thinking. Without a proper without a proper um, autopsy, there's no way of telling. And none of what you, killed? none of you, found like toxic rads going off while you're in Med Bay or anything like that. No, 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 nothing went off like that. Hmm, that's interesting. Because as far as we know, these two people are the only two people on board, other than us, right? That's right. Speaking of toxic red gauges. They go off. Rip. Well, temperature warning, yeah? No. Nope. There's something toxic in the air. Uh, do we, is there a it shouldn't gas be connected mask or to... rebreather? Sorry, what was that? Cat, you're saying something? Sorry? Uh, yeah, are there gas marks or breather thingies around or not here you have to go to our you'll probably have to kit. go to your cabins to, you have to go to your kit to get them um and that's where ellen and um that's where ellen and um uh Fiatal, I've forgotten his name um are, are heading they're heading to their cabins to grab their to grab their, their, their um gas masks all right, we masks. Too. Yep. all right um by the time you get to your cabins Okay, um, you you're each starting to hack and cough quite a bit to the point where you each take a point of damage from whatever it is in the air. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, by the time you get your masks on, you each take another point of damage. Okay. Yep. And. And once the gas masks are on, you suffer a further two points of damage over the space of a minute or so as you get whatever it is out of your lungs. Okay. Uh, and the toxic rad gauges you're wearing are definitely, they're still active. They're like on. Does my Atmos calves uh, give an indication of what the thing is? Uh, it would. Um, it's... Uh, It's uh, Christy E gas, actually. Oh, so it's well, the biochem. It's the biochem stuff. Rip. All right. Well, which is well, that was that's down in um. Four. Um, yeah, that's down on deck four. All I think right. it's deck four, or is it further down? Or is actually no? Is that deck three? That's got the tanks hanging off of it. 
no, I no, do those think those are the engines. The engines, the engines. I think your fight's going to deck seven in the storage area. I think. Yeah, those are the. Yeah, s- the storage pods are below deck eight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that would be, hang on, um, I'm pretty sure that's, give me a sec, give me a sec, give me a sec. I had it a second ago, I lost it again now. No, it is deck eight. It's not, they're stored on the cargo deck. The canisters you bought back from, and the ones that were already pre-bought back from, from them, they're down on the cargo deck. So if it's, if, if it's um, CISDE gas, then it's coming from deck eight. All right, and that means that all the below decks are probably a lot more gnarly. Oh, I suppose it's just seven and eight. Okay, yep. We'll head down there then. All right. Um, so you head down to deck eight. Um, uh, the captain um, um, oh, is actually, coming. Yeah, before we uh, yep. complete sort of uh, murder hobos, uh, are the other two all right? Like they got their masks on in time and shit like that. Oh, they, they took they took a bit of damage. They took a bit of damage like you did. Um, or at least the captain did. Um, Feator hasn't come out of his room yet. Uh-oh. Uh oh. We should probably check. <laughs> probably check. Probably yep. not a bad idea. Uh, so Feator's cabin is. Um, M23s for eight horse. All right, uh, cat will knock. Um, no answer. Uh, she will open the door. Uh, Fiator is lying on the floor of his cabin with his gas mask on or gas suit on for a drill site. Same thing. Uh, I'll yell out to Doc. Medic. Yep, Doc will run. Okay. Uh, so, y- yes, I said, um, Fiator is lying on the floor of his cabin in his gas suit, gas mask, gas suit. So, Has medical the diagnosis. Has been breached? Um, medical diagnosis. Uh, well, he's dead. And based on the fact that there was toxic gas in the air, um, the assumption at this stage is he died of, uh, of gas toxicity, of um, CS poison, uh, CL, um, um, uh, 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 CISDE gas poisoning is, is the assumption at this stage. No, there are no holes in his in his suit that you can see. Um, you require it require a a, a full on. Um, um, search check to, to, to determine it completely. Um, and don't forget, uh, Dan, that, um, uh, that, that D100 hasn't been changed on Doc's sheet, looks like. So it's rolling a D100 and a D10. I was wondering why it was doing that. Yeah, remember we had to change it over last fortnight? That's better. That's a search. Uh, you don't spot no. anything, Cat. I'm out. Well, that's weird. I don't see any issues with the suit. Uh, was that? I'm assuming that was Doc who did that, not you, Saris. Yeah, that was Doc's diagnosis. Yeah, that's the Doc's previous diagnosis. one was kind of bogus. Yeah, fair enough. Um, Vogue, you notice that um, uh, the gas filters are missing from Fiator's uh, gas mask suit. Hmm. Is there some like matrix swamp being wandering these corridors? Are we finding <laughs> ectoplasm or <laughs> No, you're not finding. There's nothing like that that you've noticed um, so far. All right, uh, this is weird. Uh, we bring this up to 
Captain. Well, the captain's the captain's with you. Don't forget, she was in the. She's getting her gas mask as well, so she's there just as much as you. So the seven of you are all there. Yeah. Um, do, are you sure there's no one else on the ship? No, not that I know of. Yeah, I know you're talking. Um, then did you do this? <laughs> did you? No, of course not. Why would I? Why would I kill my own crew? I don't know, but I know that we aren't doing it. <laughs> well, you say you're not doing it. I mean, you know, I, I know I'm not doing it, but I, I haven't been with you lot all the time. You could be doing it. That Okay, uh, so let's, let's see if we can get rid of the gas. The second, the other thing we need to do is put air and water on the other remaining escape pod. Well, it's already got. Well, it's already got air. It's already got um, water and that on it. It'd be it's a very bad. Bad. Seventeen <laughs> days or sixteen no, days no, until. No, and I don't. And I don't think there'd be enough energy in the in the um, in the system for the, the heat to last that long either. She says, "Look, we're trapped here. We've well, got to get this sorted out. We've got to work out who's knocking off my crew." looking suspiciously at all of you, in particular, Cerise. That could be human I think we're all right? looking suspiciously at her, too. Yeah, I know. I thought you might be doing that. Um, we're stuck here for the next 11 days. Or so nobody the... goes off alone. Let's go solve the problem. Yeah, Let's all go. right. Yeah, okay. That sounds... That sounds... Look, I, you obviously don't believe me, okay? If you want, I'll, I'll submit to a tell-all dose. To prove my innocence, she says. The doc can arrange that once we get this gas situation sorted. So let's Fair go enough. do that. <laughs> All right. So you're heading down to you're heading down to uh, deck eight, are you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, when you get down to deck eight, um, again, it's toxic in it's toxic in the toxic gas in the air. Um. um the um, um. You notice that the the canisters you bought up from down down at the well the canisters that you and others bought up from down uh down from jetson um they've all got at least one um uh hole in them uh, looks like from some sort of weapon as in gun looks like you're they've right. been shot you're right babu we're not getting shot paid. in or shot out uh shot in looks like they were punched by gunfire from the outside of the canisters, not the ship. Jettison uh, all of them then. Uh, no, there are no safes on board. Uh, I, was is it a laser pistol or is it a projectile weapon? Uh, damn good question. I'm just looking for that now because it doesn't actually say what I'm aiming at the moment. But I can find out. If I could, get, could do some do a quick bit of cross reference. Um, where is there? It is. So what type of uh, sidearm does the captain carry? She doesn't. Uh, it's laser. It's laser. It looks like laser fire. And those or are energy, in deck en eight? energy, energy weapon fire of some sort. It, it it's not disrupted like a disruptor would be. Um, you doubt a sonic shot would uh, would would do this damage the way it has. So the, the, the suspicion is it's a laser. Mm -hmm. Well then, uh, with these being having holes in them, I guess, is there any way to, to hmm. What options do we have turning to the lead engineer? Well, we get rid of the canisters. We could probably de we could probably detoxify the, the air when we um, by um, manipulating the life support the life support computer life okay. support program. Says okay. the captain. How do we get rid of these canisters? Where's the best place? Out, out the nearest airlock, which would be um, nearest airlock. Wow. 
Uh, airlock, 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 airlock on deck five. M12 on M M12 um, at the airlock, into the, one of the airlocks into the ship, and it's on deck five. Okay. What about deck seven and the M27? There looks like there's a side door that doesn't connect. Oh, there is. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't see that. Yep, that's probably close. I didn't see that. Sorry. Yeah, yep, M27 on deck seven. Okay, cool. Um, thanks for spotting that, mate. I didn't. Mm -hmm. Nothing better go wrong there because that's our last remaining lifeboat, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you reckon I'm going for TPK, do you? All right. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Uh, let's take the canisters up. They're not particularly heavy, are they? They're like. Oh, they're at 20 kilos. Well, they're at they're a couple of you, you carry two at a time. Yeah, okay. Um, we'll, we'll do that. All right. So you load all the canisters into the, into the airlock. Um, it takes you a couple of hours, or it takes you, yeah, an hour or more. Um, somebody tethers themselves in the airlock, yes. Yeah. And then open the door and jettison the can jettison, yeah. jettison, jettison the canister. Is that what's happening? Yeah, do they have maglev boots? Or will the change uh, in pressure, they... if we keep the pressure in... Right, we keep the oxygen in, we put the canisters in, the canisters should get just sucked out into space, right? Yeah, but that's not the airlock one open that way. It needs to be zero pressure. You gotta have unless somebody wanna, in there to open it. You gotta have somebody in there. Unless you wanna unless you wanna sabotage um the um the airlock. And I don't think Kat would like that based on Kat's last couple of comments. Uh, Probably not there, a great idea. Do they have mag Lev boots or whatever they're called. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Yeah, we'll you get need those. a spacesuit or whatever. Spacesuit, those oh, you, boots. Oh, they, yeah. Well, you, you have a, there'd be a, there'd be a, a, a spacesuit aboard somewhere. So yeah, yeah you'd have that. You, 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 there's nothing stopping you from doing. Just, you've got the you would have the equipment to do what you're thinking about doing. Okay, then yeah, do that, and I don't mind going out. And then mm -hmm. while while we're loading the canisters and so on, Cat and um, the captain I can't remember her name for some reason. Ellen uh, should the yeah the captain should go on the computer and shut down all the robots. Those are the only other things that I know of that can move around and do things. Fair comment. Um, well, terminal. Is that Terminal 6? I think it's Terminal 6. Does it look like a 6 to you on Deck 7? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Let me just confirm that. Uh, yeah, that is deck, that is Terminal 6. That's also the life support computer. Uh, life support terminal, um, incidentally. Or one of them. Yeah, that's the... Uh, that, that, that links into the... Uh, um, the uh, the life support um, uh, system. So give me a second. Um, so the captain logs into the life support the life support computer down there and activates the life support system, life support software. Um, and over the course of um, about half an hour, forty minutes or so, um, the Reading on your toxic red gauges, red gauges drop until it eventually goes into the green area, and Ellen takes her mask off. Oh, thank God for that, she says. Now, robot maintenance, you reckon? I'm going to have to do that from deck four. Deck four. Deck four had robo control four because it could get into the main. Computer. There's Terminal 5. Oh, no, sorry, yeah. that was Deck 3. That was Deck 3. I'm thinking you're on the wrong deck there, dude. <laughs> no, Deck 3 just has the... Ten, terminal which, 10. Yeah, which was it. Yeah, I thought... No, I thought Terminal 5 had the two connections. Uh, terminal... F well, no, well, this is Terminal 6 on the life support deck here. And it can connect to two computers, both the MLS and the MGL. 
but that's not the robot no. maintenance. The robot maintenance is over on the MNN. Yeah. So, so yeah. terminal ten does connect to MN, MNN. Yes. Yeah. As as do several other computer uh, as do several other terminals. Yeah. But so that's the, the only uh, one that I know about. Yep. Yeah. Well, the, obviously the the terminals one, two, and three on the bridge would connect in too. Ah, yeah, true. All right. Because um, you know that would be well. The, the captain's been using Ellen's been using Terminal Two. Whenever, every time you've seen her, or she said she's been using Terminal Two, that's the case with it. Yeah, true. Um, so uh, Terminal Ten's the closest. Is anyone going with Ellen? Yeah, I'll go. Okay, Is, are you no, all going? We all with go. Ellen? Okay. Yeah, we all go. Okay, Let's stick together. All right. So you, you end up on deck. You end up on deck three. Um, Ellen sits down at Terminal Ten, um, and after a few moments of manipulating software. Um, that's it. All the robots should be shut down now, she says. So who, the next question is, is who has projectile weapons? Uh, well, now the next question is, is what's the temperature in here? Uh, 35 degrees. All right. Like it is throughout the rest of the ship, as, you, as, so. as per your request. Mild, let's. Can anybody think of anything else that has mobility around the ship? Is, are you sure that the the robotics control system that you just interacted with is the only robot control system on the on the ship? Is there um, like a inventory a backup? somewhere? Yeah. Uh, no, there's a, the the maintenance computer's got a robot management program as well. All right, uh, so we should go there as well. Uh, no, we no should... need, no, no need. She says, and she types a few more um, commands in, and yep, it's disabled there as well. She says. So, do you have locations of where all the robots were shut down? We should go valid verify all of them. Uh, yeah, um, let's see, um, I need, oh, where's my list of robots to start with? Um, so there's the, okay, the AUD-1A engine maintenance robot is on deck four. Uh-huh. Uh, the CRLE1 maintenance robot is... Somewhere on the ship, I'm not quite sure where. Give me a second. Um, see if I can locate her. Locate it. She says. I'm. Um, oh, that's right. Um, give me a second. 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 Um, the maintenance bot appears to be on deck one. You, say that like you sound surprised. No. Oh, I didn't know there was any maintenance needed to be doing on deck one, she says. But obviously, the, obviously, yeah. Uh, the, uh, the, sorry, just, uh, the, um, the GWLR5 recreation bots in the, in the rec room, um, the HKKR2 ice cutters up on Snowball, and the DBA security bots in the um, security room. Security in this in the storage room. The storage room is M fourteen? Fifteen. Yeah, fourteen, yeah, that's right, M fourteen, yes. Hang on, let me just confirm that for you. Is it the storage or is it no security room? M fourteen is the security room. That's where the security bot is. Makes perfect sense. Okay. So let let's go up to one. And we'll clear all the rooms, and I'll manually switch off the robot, assuming it's off and it's there. And then we'll clear all the rooms, deck two. Then we can go to deck three and do the same thing in the security room. Sure. 
when there's something that happens? Does anything happen when we do all that? All right, so you make your way up to deck one. Um, does anything happen on the way? That's a good question. Right. Um, so you make the maintenance robot um, is um, standing um, against uh, the north wall, not too far from the outer airlock. Um, it's got a. Um, pardon me. It's got a uh, um, um, a screwdriver in one hand and a and a, a, a cutting torch in the other. Uh, there's a slight cut in the wall, not not too exposed to a vacuum, but just into the circuitry to get the circuitry and that behind uh behind the wall whatever it was whatever that's where it was doing some sort of maintenance whatever um but it's it's standing there uh with its arms by its side in in, in the classic standard in the classic i'm off position you know what i mean verifying that my my shield is on i'll go up and manually verify and turn off its hard switch so yeah it's got uh it's uh, got three mechanical legs uh, three mechanical arms. Um, it's uh, got an albedo coating, paint paint coating on it over itself. Um, it's in the form of a cone with a point with its point downwards. Uh, it appears to have IR sensors in addition to video and audio ones. Um, and in addition to the tool, into a, in, in, and in addition to a tool compartment where the tools in two of its arms are. There's um, some spare wire and a couple of circuit boards and a few other bits and pieces. Um, opening up the panel and flipping the switch, the uh, switch is flipped off. Can okay. I have can I have um, a search a spot roll off off you please? Sorry, first one. Which was what? I missed it. I got my map up. Hang on. I'm going to minimize that. Like 15. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You missed it by 15. And then I want to look at the, the wall panel that it had open, if I can sure. tell. And maybe and ask uh, the captain, you know, what circuits are these? Are they circuits for the outer airlock? Um, we have had a few we, we've been having a few glitches with that for a long while long before you arrived so obviously the bot was um attempting to repair it it's a very low priority it's a very low priority uh repair job um there was never any danger of the airlock opening or anything else like that so um yeah okay let's go down to two we'll clear all the rooms including the private bathrooms all right two anyone else got robotic skill Apart from Cerise? Who? Nope. I thought somebody did. Maybe. The cat? No. No. I keep suggesting people do, but I don't think anybody <laughs> ever takes it. That's all right. I'm just asking the question. Um, so, all right. Can I get. Uh, now, you've got technician, haven't you, Voke? Yeah. And you've got technician too, the cat, don't you? No, I have engineer. Engineer. Oh, okay. Can I get both of you to give me a, a spot check, please? With some massive penalties, I might add. Which I don't think is going to make for, matter much for Vokes role. But what about yours, Cat? Cat? Okay. Uh... Yeah. Voke, can I have you over in the private room for a second? User left your channel. Channel switched. Um, you have a sneaking suspicion based on the fact that there's a couple of, um, there's a very, 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 very slight hum and a couple of lights, uh, uh, LEDs on the uh, maintenance bot, which are active, that the bot isn't shut down. Even though it's supposed to be? Well, Cerise said she flipped the switch. Hmm. Okay. 
So, so um, there's still we'll power them. in it, even though it's not. Supposed well, there would always there'd always there'd always be anyway. There's always be there. power, but there's electricity po- running through it and not. It does. It does. It, 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 you don't think it's shut down? Okay. User left your channel. Channel switched. So just as just as you start making your way um, to the ladder to get down to deck two. Q vote. <laughs> uh, the bot doesn't seem to be shut down. I still hear a little bit of humming, and there's a, still a few lights on. Still a few flickering lights. Are you sure you turned it off? So, Ceres will go back and verify looking for the lights that folk mentioned. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, now you've got robotic skill, so if you can give me, uh, where is it? Lost it. <sighs> skills, NSA skills, technical skills, robotic skills. If you could give me, um, actually give me a repair roll. Not that it's repairing it, but it's part of the, it's the catch all for what we're doing. Um, yeah, folks, right. The thing is not turned off. It's not doing anything. It's still standing there, but it's not. It's not turned off. I want to disconnect its power battery. Um, you can uh, attempt to do that. Yes. Would that be uh, a that repair? Would, that would be a repair. A roll. Yes. As you go to do that, the robot turns on you and attacks you. Um, and that's actually a good place to leave it um, on a cliffhanger. Um, so we'll wrap it up there unless anyone's got any real objections because we've been going for four hours or so. Um, anyone got any objections? Nope. Nope. I want to kill right. the robot first. But no, no we'll, leave that, we'll leave that for next week. We'll leave that for next time. Um, guys, thanks for playing. I hope everyone's enjoying it, um, enjoying the mystery of what's going on. Um, yep. if, uh, if you'd like to... Uh, We'll see everybody in two weeks' time. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for watching those who are on YouTube. Um, if you want to roll those credits, please, Ryan. And well, I said we'll see everybody in two weeks. Thanks for watching. All right, take care. Well, that's it for this session. We hope you've enjoyed the game as much as we did. We'd like to thank Smiteworks, Sirenscape, and Twitch. And, of course, all the fantastic people involved with the Star Frontiers RPG over the years. I'm Dulux Oz. And on behalf of the entire gaming group, we'd like to say thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time. Until then, may your God go with you.